It's all in what you do, hey, some things you got to do, hey, 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 hey. Eric Gomes, big homie Coop Birdman. What's up, KJ? G Brown. What's up, Mr. Bussy? Doug and D, what's up, B More? Hotep, Oak Park, what it do? The Joy of Boxing, amen. Hotep, Vic, what it do? Mr. Robinson, you been with me too. What's up, JC? What's up, Cav D J J? Hey, for show. Sure. What's up, Federal? I appreciate you guys coming in here, man. And uh, we're gonna play this trailer, and he'll be in about nine, ten, nine, fifteen, and we'll rock and roll. What's up, Mr. Kirkland? And uh, yeah, man, this would be a great. I said Malcolm alleged that. Uh, uh, some of Elijah's women were underage secretaries, and can you expound on that? Yeah, well, I guess they were, because they were there. I see. I seen them. I seen them myself. It's all true. It's all true. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Good evening, messenger. that you were the last messenger. How many other bastard children do you have? At least 15. At least 15, y'all. Welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you guys coming in here, man. Oh, man. It's, it's like 
Thursday. So that makes it our remix this real quick. That makes it our Friday, man. I truly appreciate you guys coming in here tonight, man. And uh, uh, first, I want to say uh, I, I appreciate Trail Boxing Talk and Blue Bud. I, I think they did a hell of a job. And I got a lot of information from them that's going to hopefully make this interview uh, part three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so thank you to them, man, for, for making that happen. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys coming in here, man. We got pre-New Year's, man. Happy New Year's. I remember we brought in new, we brought in New Year's together last year, if I'm not mistaken. So that was pretty dope, man. And uh, yeah, man, y'all be safe out there tomorrow, man. And go blue. You know what I mean? Michigan, what, what, you back, Leon, we back. And uh, uh, what's up, Village Brother? And uh, yeah, man, just be safe out there. Have a good time. And we are. I'm definitely rooting for Michigan. It's going to be a hell of a game tomorrow versus Georgia. I can't wait. I'm excited for that. And uh, yeah, man, so that's kind of where I'm at with this, man. Um, I know you guys have been excited for this interview, and uh, I, I can tell by the DMs. So, um, but yeah, it, it's gonna be fun. It, it's gonna be fun, and I, I appreciate Mickey B. I'm not sure if he's in Philadelphia, or excuse me, Pennsylvania, or back in Las Vegas. I'm uncertain of that. I saw he was traveling and, and in gyms and stuff. So, uh, hopefully, he linked up with uh, with uh, Tevin Farmer. Man, that'd be dope. You know, what I mean, him and Tevin Farmer link up. <laughs> start the early promotion on they fight that'll be dope man that that'll truly truly be dope man and uh so uh can't wait for that man and uh yeah man so just be safe out there tomorrow man you know what i mean do it as early as possible you know out here in la they uh you know what i mean they shoot up in the sky i don't know is that a nationwide thing or is that an la thing where they shoot in the sky do they do that in y'all in y'all city y'all Because all you hear is bah, 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 bah. I think it's a waste of I, I think it's a waste of ammo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because bullets come down, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I think it's a it's nationwide. Okay, thank you. Um, I think it's a waste of ammo. Ammo is so expensive, man. Was it fifty cents? What is it averages out to like fifty cents per bullet? You know what I mean? So save that money, man. Save that money. Ammo is mad expensive, and it gets so. I mean, it's more, but you know. But uh, but yeah, man, I'm I'm excited, and uh, you know what I was watching before the show started? I was watching that John Madden uh the John Madden documentary, and uh, I'm excited to finish watching it, dog. I'm really really excited to finish watching that man, and uh, uh I forgot like. The nostalgia of John Madden. I, I forgot the greatness of John Madden, man. You know, man, he was awesome, man. His sound. I forgot John Madden used to do those sound effects, dog. <laughs> and he used to always. I liked him because he talked about like uh things that didn't make sense. It, it's on Fox. It's on Fox, and uh, that didn't correlate with box. I mean, with uh, with football and. You know what I mean? Him and Pat Summerall were awesome together, man. And, uh, oh, man. He trying to fight fans. What'd he say, Boxer Spar? Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> What'd he say now? What did LV say now? He fighting, man. Look at LV is a sad man. He's a sad, sad man, dog. Like, man, he reaching. Yeah, he, he got to stay relevant, man, because where else he going to work? You know? TMT is, I mean, uh, once four, I mean, once Tank is out of there, uh, what they gonna do? What Leonard LB gonna be? What are you gonna do? Ask Bob Aaron for a job? <laughs> what he <are you> gonna do? <laughs> Instead of <laughs> what he gonna do? He gonna sign? Uh, <laughs> he gonna go ask Eddie Hearn for a job? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What are you gonna do, man? Come on, man. Cut the smack out, man. That that junk make no sense, man. Leonard LB, man. As I say, you wear a suit, dog. You want people to look up to you, man. You wear a suit. Wear that suit, man. Wear that suit. And wear it proudly, man. How come men that wear a suit always want to be gangster? You know what I mean? Like, if you wasn't gangster, 
you all like not always, but many men want to be gangster. I don't grasp that understanding. If you made it out, act like you made it out. You know, it ain't like 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 being poor and and having one parent is a badge of honor. Oh, <laughs> no, he didn't, dog. Hey, you got to DM it to me, dog. He told the fan to pull up to the jail. Come on, let it, dog. Man, you do too much, man. Please screenshot that and send it to my DM, dog. That would be epic, man. You already know I'm going to do something on that. You ain't got to get attention like that, Lennon. All you got to do is go sign these fighters, man. You know what I mean? Like Bob Arum did. You know, he went inside five Olympians. You could have signed at least one of them. I mean, make make headway that way. You know what I mean? That's probably the best way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, I mean, because it literally makes no sense. What's up, Tay? It literally makes no sense, man. He out here, he out here being a game banger. Oh, oh, he watching the show tonight too because he's definitely watching the show tonight for sure. I one hundred percent. He's watching the show tonight. Uh, what are you gonna do? Ban me in my afterlife? <laughs> hey, hey, you you can't cover us in heaven <laughs> or hell or paradise for my Islam brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Is that what he going to say? <laughs> you can't cover TMT fights in hell. Well, I'm going to heaven. So I won't be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, man, it is what it is, man. I just think Leonard LB got to he got to come out of that space he's in, man. I guess he's waiting for a windfall from Floyd or something like that, man. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's funny how they go from being a cash cow to having too much money to unable to uh unable to pay uh Devin Haney. Like, how do you go from that? You know, it, it literally makes no sense. So he's gonna have to figure that out all on his own. I mean, I'm not smart enough to help him. You know what I mean? Cause I'm not uh I don't solve problems. I I don't solve problems with my fist balled up. I guess Leonard Ellaby do. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Let it LB solves his problems through fighting. Who the hell wants to fight these days, man? You know what I mean? All these rappers dying and you know what I mean? <laughs> he told her, please, please screenshot that and send me send that to me, man. He just looks so buffoonish, man. So buffoonish. You're not the fighter, dog. You're the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. You know what I mean? Y'all fought 50 times and made millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Shit, no, excuse me. Billions of dollars. If you want to talk about total gross, billions of dollars, dog. You good. You know what I mean? You ain't gotta, you definitely ain't gotta do all that. And it's like uh when people were dancing for uh Joe Biden. I'm like, why are people twerking? Why is why is why are they twerking? I'm confused. Why are they twerking? It makes no sense to me. But they twerked. <laughs> they definitely twerked. So uh, I don't know, man, but it is what it is, man. And uh, here we are. And um, but, yeah, you were solving car problems. I was like, brother, couldn't set up. <laughs> Kyle, my guy, man. Yeah, we going to help each other. You know, what I mean, that's my dude. And uh, he got a movie coming out, man. So we're going to support him on Sunday. Right. He has a he has a big his first movie coming out. I, I, it's a hell of an accomplishment, dog. When I say it's a hell of an accomplishment to do a project like that when it's all on you, sheesh, it's tough. And you got moving you got moving parts that don't value it as much as you do, and you got to keep them inspired, keep them encouraged. You know what I'm saying? This I mean, kudos to him, man. And without further ado, man, the man of the hour. Yeah, you. you, you, you yeah, what's up, man? How you doing, King? How you feeling, dog? What's up with you? What's going on, man? I had a little trouble getting on. Oh well, thank yeah, you. Oh, it's, so it's so you back good, in, though. You back in Vegas, huh? Yeah, yeah, yup. Yeah, I just got in this morning. Oh, how, how was Philly? Oh, it was cool. You know, um, I got a chance to get around and, uh -huh. and, and see a lot of people there. Uh, you know, I got family and a lot of friends there, so it was cool. 
Nah, that's what's up. Did you get a chance to run into Tevin Farmer? No, nah, man. I, I, he ran. <laughs> Tevin and Farmer ran. He, he was supposed to be running me up out the city, but he ended up running. Man, I was he, all he, in he the story. Yeah, I, I was on the hunt looking for him. I'm like, all right, let me, you know, let me quit bullying the cat. You know, yeah, he, he, he didn't probably, got up out the city. He probably was in a strip club, man. You know, what I mean? he probably was there. Yeah, I was. Yeah. What I happened? Was, I was all in y'all stories waiting on that. You know, I'm like, something about to happen. You know, it would it would have been great PR, you know, to get the ball rolling and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Shit, I'm going to, you know, I'll probably pop back up soon. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Man, I totally appreciate you coming on, man. How's the response been since the uh, since you've been on Trill? Um, it, 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 been, it been cool. A lot of people was calling me, thanking me, you know, just to sharing, uh-huh. sharing the story. Um. To be honest with you, uh, everything I said is the truth. Like I ain't the kind of dude that's coming in there to right to 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 paint a picture on somebody that that or to force a perception on somebody. All I did was really I blacked out, and finally, just some of the stuff came out, you know, because I held it in for so long. But mm-hmm. um, everybody liked it, man. I be getting calls from you know, um, of course you're gonna have the you know them fans that just you know, over the, but the, the thing is, like I say, I, I painted the picture and just recited the actions that took place. So, you know, right. if, if, if whoever didn't like it, I mean, if you don't like the truth, I mean, that's just what it is. Have your old manager, has he reached out to you? Dewan? has he? No, nah, I haven't, you know, and, 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 and that's the problem to me. Mm-hmm. Some we was been supposed to do and he could have been did. Like at the end of the day, I'm past it. You know, I'm I get disappointed here and there, mainly with him. Like I say, Floyd, it's just you know, small. I, I just think the pieces that he put in play to run such a big, big company fumbled the ball, right? And I was a part of the fumbling worse by than anybody times 50. And um, you know, I just think as good as Floyd is, um, he should have probably a better, more focused staff, you know. Um when Floyd put his hand on it, it's different because, but he don't have the time to do all that and to look over. So, you know, the people that you put in place at the end of the day, you know, they just, you know, doing what they want to do and just, mm-hmm. it ain't, it ain't really, it ain't a good look for him. Why do you separate the two between Dewan and Floyd and, and the whole conglomerate of TMT? Because, um, when I was with, when it was just me, I never needed a middleman. It was like, for what? Like, why is this dude here? Like me, me and Floyd is like family. You know, we've been, you know, I knew Floyd for like 20 some years, like over, you know, at least 20 years. So my thing was, um, for what? Like, why now almost like, uh, so with him, I just try to be as honest with the, with everything as possible mm-hmm. on, on knowing that stuff was getting manipulated. And, you know, I blame myself a little bit, too, for just being falling back too long and thinking shit is going to work itself out. You know, I blame myself for that part. Um, But, you know, Floyd got a lot going on. He was still active. And I know how many people tug on him. Even though it's my career, Mm -hmm. you know, I regret not being more aggressive, you know, and and, and letting stuff slide for so long, even without telling him. Not right. that he should have knew, even though he should have knew exactly what was going on. It's just a weird thing because, you know, when you got a middleman, you probably know about, you know, the business. So, you yeah. know, the middleman to me is, is what's hurting boxing, to be honest with you. Wow. Wow. Can you elaborate on on some of the conversations uh, you've had with Foy, like a, as it pertains to you signing with Dewan and then you realizing that it's truly not working out? Um. Yeah, he just kind of, you know, he 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 agreed for us to part ways and do it in a professional manner. But, you know, I still gave dude chance after chance. But the problem was, I think, that it was more of an experiment because he never managed. Like, he might regret stuff that he done, but he ain't never come to me and say, my fault. You know, me and him was, you know, it the, the dialogue should have been open a little better to where he could have came to me like, man, my bad. This is my first time. But when stuff happened repetitively, then you kind of know, like, you know, at the end of the day, I ain't going to bring other people, but they got 60, 70 fighters. So, 
you could just paint the picture from there. You see a couple fighting yeah. here and there. But like I say, I just think that, you know, I, I think that if Floyd had like a Richard Schaefer or somebody, or, you know, that's just to throw out a name. Like I, I thought at one point he was going to have a cat like that uh, running the company. It would have been smooth. It would have been great because I never expected for Floyd to be overlooking stuff all the time. Like, you know, he got a, a whole lot going on and he's, he was still active. So um, I just think, you know, that, that's, that was my only, my main problem. Like, you know, with Floyd, he did, he did so much good for me that even though, you know, the times that happened for so many years, and it kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it was a lot that went on, man. That you know, I wish he, I wish he had known. But that's like I say, I got to blame myself a little bit too for mm -hmm. being a little too relaxed and, and and just letting stuff slide and not bringing it to him. You know, it was oh. real. It was a real confusing situation. What were some of those things that that that, that you consistently uh, let slide? Well, like, all right, for instance um stuff like stuff like um reports coming out in the media before it come to me mm. you know that was a way to put my back up against the water you know then if it don't happen it make me look bad so stuff was happening when i got had a broken hand or hand surgery you know that's actually how i had to vacate my belt you know i didn't lose it in the ring but the the, the miscommunication but it, it was it was intentional, but like I say, when people get into this game to hustle and they look at it, look at it as a, a come up for them. See, one thing about Floyd, he got so much money, he don't care about an extra, you know, few hundred grand or million or whatever. He could, that ain't nothing to him. Mm. But anybody else, you got to think like, you know, shit, that's a hell of a lot of money. You know, the less the less I get, the more you get. Kind of one of them kind of things, but. If it was done up front, it would have been all fair. Like, you know, but putting stuff out in the media, promising me one thing, then putting it out to media the next day, and it's the total opposite. Right. Was almost like, okay, you gonna take it or you gonna take the hit in the media because it's gonna look like you reneged on it. And and that caused a lot of like, you know, bad press on me. And that happened a couple times to the point to where after that, I ain't, you know, sometimes I had to take the hit, you know, and just go through a certain stuff in certain fights just because you know i'm like i ain't about to you know keep on you know the, the shit can't keep falling on me i'm gonna just ride with it but um right like i say you know some of the stuff i regret uh and i, I think you know I, I know for a fact he know like damn i fucked the situation up uh my fault i'm cussing a little bit I don't no know, you fine like, it's the shot we do okay, yeah i'm gonna yeah, say yeah. we up in the shop but yeah man it's just crazy man it's just it's the weirdest situation i've ever been in in my life to be honest with you because it's mm. I mean, it, it, it's bittersweet because it's like, damn, like, all right, Floyd, you know, Floyd, everybody hero, but, you know, with, with, with me, I was around way before all of the, you know, before he was even famous and, you know, right. way before the, the Money Mayweather time. So that's why I kind of separate the two because it's like, damn, you know, I made mistakes. Floyd's mistake to me, man, was just the pieces that he put in place that it shouldn't be family unless they qualified. Like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's guys that's qualified to do the business that can have a company on fire. Like if Floyd really put his mind to wanting something to happen, it's going to happen. And at one point that's where it was at until middle pieces start coming in. So that's when the, when shit just got weird. Gotcha. The, uh, Kyle is here. The Cole's here. What's up, Kyle? What's up? Going Mickey, Bay? Mickey Bay, what's going on? W what's up with you? What's going on? You see what shirt I got on? Oh, okay. Yeah, you got my other guy, my, my other guy. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, uh, you were with Floyd long before the fame. Can you get into y'all relationship that y'all had at the beginning and how it flourished so we can paint a whole picture? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that did, my brother, he had to have fulfilled the best prophecy I've ever seen mm -hmm. because I used to be with Emmanuel Stewart. He used to sponsor me, you know, the Crunk uh, Gym when I was um, younger, like maybe 15 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I learned a lot from his way too. Rest in peace to Emmanuel Stewart. Um, he did a lot for me. Uh, so at that time, my brother, when we first started boxing, you know, before that, it was a little a couple years before that. It was around the time that Floyd fought in the Olympics was um, 
96. when me and my brother had kind of just started boxing. So our trainer back home gave us a tape. And my brother was just watching the tapes and he caught Floyd. Now, mind you, Floyd's still an amateur. Mm. And the next day, I just keep seeing the mimic in somebody. I'm like, man, who the hell is that? He like, man, this dude, the best fighter in the world. I'm like, what you mean, the amateurs? He like, nah, he better than all the than than, than uh than at, I think at the time it was De La Hoya, um, Sugar Shane Mosley. I'm like, nah, he can't be. He only an amateur. He like, man, I'm telling you. He is like, we need to um to get with them one day. Like, we need to train with his dad. You know, we need to get with them and learn and, and when we turn pro in the future. So I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, because our plan was, you know to probably go with Emmanuel Stewart right? at the time. But then, you know, my brother was pretty much studying Floyd so much and just liked him so much. I didn't have a choice, but the, we kind of just was following his career and everything. And then um, years later, a few years later, I probably was around 17, I think, um, he ended up uh, seeing me fight. And when I got out the ring, he – um, this was an amateur. He saw me fight. I was young and he got my contact. Now at this time he wanted to manage me as a pro cause he wasn't nowhere near having a promotional company. You know, this one, he probably was still like 130 pounds at the time. So he like, man, you know, I'm gonna turn you pro. Like, you know what you want, this and that and the other. So I'm like, I want to make the Olympic team. And, uh, so he, you know, Floyd, like, man, you know, fuck them medals. They don't do nothing but collect dust. Come get this money. Right. So I, I stayed in touch with him just throughout, man. And um, one day, my brother, it was wintertime in Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm from. You know, we got bad winters. Mm-hmm. So once I ain't seen my brother for a couple of days, but I'm thinking it's just normal. Like, okay, he probably spent the night over one of his little girl's house or something, right? Mm-hmm. But then he hit me and he like, yeah, I'm like, what you doing? Where you at? He was like, oh, I'm outside in the pool, the swimming pool. I'm like, how you out in the pool? And it's like, five degrees outside. He like, oh, no, I'm in Vegas. I didn't even believe him. But, man, he put Floyd on the phone, and he just went out there with a one-way ticket and, like, $100. Wow. But I didn't even know he left. He didn't even tell me. But he was like, man, listen, the, the he ended up coming back. Um, It was funny because I remember he came back because we live in the hood, hood. Like, so it was funny because when he came back, he had a chauffeur. And, and he just getting all this stuff. Like, you know, he getting all his clothes, whatever he needed to get. And everybody just was, like, taking pictures and, like, was like, what the hell is this? Like, what's the hell going on? So he went – he actually came for, like, a couple hours and just went right back to Vegas. But when I was um, fighting the Olympic trials and stuff at the time, you know, I just stayed in touch while my brother was already there training with Roger, with Floyd, and, and, and with Floyd Sr. You know, he was pretty much already with him for a year or so. So it was just automatic that when I turned pro – I made the Olympic team. I won the trials and everything, but I caught I caught pneumonia in the training camp. Right. The last day of training. So uh, you know, I ended up getting to go fight. So um I, I rested for a few months because I got real sick. And um, and then I came out, ended up coming out to Vegas. Uh that what the odd what a, the crazy thing is that at that same time, Jay Prince was pretty much like my mentor at the time. Right. Because after Emmanuel, he kind of stepped in and he met me, my brother, and Andre Ward. And he started just fly us around the country and around the world and everything, all the big fights um, to Houston, all of that. Uh, he actually was going to move me and my family to Houston. And at the time, my dad was uh, our amateur trainer. He was going to let him, you know, run the gym and the program down there in Houston. But we was kind of on the fence about it. But, you know, Jay pretty much was um, – moving the pieces on my career. So I didn't end up managing, signing with Floyd at that time, but I did come out and train with his dad and start training with him and was, uh, this pretty much close with Floyd, just coming around, training with him, watching him train and all of that. And you said you guys were close. Uh, you also said in the interview that, that y'all were together uh, on Floyd's broke days. And uh, because I'm, I, 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 I want to, so the audience knows how tight y'all were, like how. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm gonna clarify because Floyd broke days is different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I ain't gonna say you know, but you know, Floyd, because at this time, this one he was like 130. Yeah. One go just turning to going from 130 to 135. He was, you know, he wasn't making that crazy money, 
in, until we seen that transition from um that stage to the to the uh, money Mayweather stage was crazy, like because he was just telling us about what he was finna do, and he landed out, and I'm like, damn, we seen it happen in front of our eyes. He like, watch this, like watch what I'm about to do. Like he like just um give me about a year or so or something like that. I don't know if that's when he had the plans of splitting with top rank or whatever, but uh I seen everything unfold that he said when he got with Al and um. It was just crazy to see him hit that 360. You know, he already lived in the big ass house anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, self just 360, like, you know, um, he was just showing us crazy wire transfers in his account and everything. We like, damn. Yeah, right, right. Kyle. So I got a, I got a few questions, man, but I, I your, your relationship with Floyd, right? Um he has a brother, right? Do you know any like the dynamics of that relationship and why his brother hasn't kind of got to uh, a money team type of vibe? You know, it, it, it puts me in the same like uh, thought as uh, with your career. Um, wait, you talking about his younger brother? Yeah. No, nah, that ain't. I can't even lie. Like that ain't. It ain't the same. Cause man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. A lot of dudes come around Floyd and they don't be focused. Like. You know, they don't, they, they get around and just want to party. I ain't saying him. I'm just going to make an example. Floyd do a ton of good stuff. Like, you know, um, like with me, for instance, I was just never the guy to ask or to, but if I'd asked for anything, I would have got it. Like, that's just how it was. Like, I just always appreciate him for what he did. So I'm like, man, I ain't going to be in his pocket like everybody else. But I just seen back in them days, he tightened up later on. He's, you know, he like, man, I ain't giving all this shit out. But back then. Man, I didn't see him do a whole lot for cats that just because he 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 took a liking to him. It wasn't even more so about what he thought about him as a fighter. But his brother, I think that was one of his dads, you know, I ain't gonna get into their business or whatever, but that was his son, and it was kind of a later situation yeah. that he, you know, but I don't I don't if 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 his brother would have been on this game, he would at least did something. Like, see, what with, with Floyd, the only my only knock is the inconsistency, like. This is what I see everybody saying, right? Oh, man, what about them? All right, the Molina fight. I was winning every round. Mm -hmm. I tried to please the fans, looked away, showboat the Floyd. I caught a few times, and they stopped it. Wow. Like, wow. Other than that, I got a split decision loss to Cambosis off a three-and-a-half-year layoff and won the, and won the Rances on the four-week notice. Split decision. So it's fighters with nine, ten losses. There ain't no excuse not to get – everybody else to keep getting big fights and not me. This wouldn't have happened if I had a middleman because when Floyd want to do something, he'd do it. Like he'd just pick the phone up like, man, who you want to fight? Bam. And make it happen. But wow. when, when the distance was in between us, I took a major hit. And, you know, um, even though I did win the title after that, you know, it was just, it was rocky. But um, just to make an example, a lot of dudes, it'd be they fought though with Floyd because to be honest with you, It'd be dudes that's not as good in the ring that get more perks than the actual good fighters. Like, you know, so it's no way. Like, if his brother was on this game, I can't see him not going at least a little further. But Floyd concentrations, I mean, he the richest athlete in the world. So that's why I knocked the squad that he picked. Like, he should have a way better um, – if he had a better engine running his team to where he just looked at stuff, like, okay, all right, I approve that. Go ahead. Because he got – a hundred other things over here going on. But if you got somebody, people, it's easy to stick your hand in the cookie jar because Floyd got a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, what was the highest point of your career? What'd you say? Um, Honestly, when I won the belt, because going into the fight, I, I had a hand injury for like years and I actually was with top rank before that. Um. So I had a lot of twists and turns, like, um, you know, so I said, okay, nobody want to fight this cat. I think he was, he was in the top seven or eight pound for pound at the time. Uh, Miguel Vasquez is a real good fighter. I was going to actually fight at 130 for a belt. So I always fought catch weights, like 132. But they said it's a dude that nobody want to fight right now at lightweight. So what you want to do? I'm like, yeah, I take it. So I knew with his style, he wasn't that active. I knew I could beat him with one hand. 
just the strategy that I can use. I knew the fight wasn't going to be impressive because it, you know, it would have been more impressive with two hands, but my job was to get my hand raised. That was the plan. Right. And right. I promised I was going to do that. So right. now when this did happen, all right, I'm going to just say this, like after that, probably was the best day of my life for real because what i heard from from uh what's the dude name that 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 run the wwe i'm gonna make an analogy um vince Jim ross vince, what's his name vince mcmahon now imagine vince mcmahon telling you oh man Matt, imagine as soon as you get back to the locker room he hugged and he say oh man like he he like he usually a low-key guy but man he back there like you would think that his own son won now mind you you know, this cat is from my hometown. He grew up with my grandparents, strongest person in boxing, really, you know, however you want to slice it, you know, him, Bob. But I'm saying I ain't just throwing his name out because we all know him be wanting mm -hmm. his act. You know what I'm saying? He'll be wanting his name to keep. But I'm when I heard what I heard from him, that made me happy because I'm like, hell yeah, finally. Because, you know, I went I was supposed to actually win a belt with 10 fights. And I went from years, which I blame a lot on myself, too, on, on signing, not misreading on who I should sign with early in my career. I, I put that fault on me. Like, you know, not staying with maybe Jay Prince longer. He had a plan on, on um, us getting the title before 11. No, some, whatever De La Hoya's uh, record was, it was 12 and or something. I was going to beat it. Yeah, I was the right. same weight. Right. What was the relationship like between your family and Al Heyman? Excuse me, the big man. Sorry about that. Well, um, uh, well, my grandparents, you know, uh, well, one side of the family, actually, my grandfather grew up with Don King because mm -hmm. he from there also. Uh, so my granddad used to fight, and him and Don used to just run the streets together and all of that. And my grandfather actually fought Don on the, in the street fight, too. Mm. And they became cool. And my other ones, you know, they they've been uh knew each other since they was kids. So um I just heard about them a lot through like other businesses and music, like because he's so low key. But when I met you remember the singer Gerald Levert? Yes. Like this is before he died. I used to always go to the studio. He he used to invite me to the studio. Um and he used to always talk about Al, because you know, his dad is is the um Eddie Levert, you know, the OJs. Yep. So they was like pretty much best friends with Al. And um, that's when I started really hearing the name. So I actually had the I actually had the chance to be the first person to sign with him in this new crop of fighters mm -hmm. before Burgo and them. Oh okay. and they hit the lottery signing with him at that time. And but I was Lord to Jay, rightfully so, because I was already rocking with him right. for you for, for some years at that time. So I'm like, man, I can't do it, like you know, but um yeah, but man, he uh, you know, it was just crazy how it, it 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 never really came together. It was it was some crazy shit. A lot of stuff that got in between that was just weird. But um, why yeah. why the relationship never connected? If, if he hugged you, uh, when you won the championship, how come the follow through wasn't as strong as that hug? Um, you know, if if if. Now, coming from a, a businessman, this is how I would have looked at it. Or right, I'm, I'm going to just say this. All right, I'm young. But here's where you make mistakes when it's your first venture. So if I'm a manager and I'm inexperienced, I never managed before, and I ain't have to invest a quarter. I just got placed right. in this position. Right. So I'm just eating off the top. I would be like, man, you know what? I'm going to work with this dude. But at the same time, if my intentions got something different on why I don't want to do like that in, Cause that cookie jar looking a little good. Mm. Then it's a conflict of interest to want to do. Cause you know, Al is the kind of guy that, I mean, you know, whatever Vince McMahon, <laughs> he, right. he the kind of guy that I think his intentions for one fighter to do good is beyond the sport. You know, his brother used to box as right. a pro. Right. Um, you know, uh, so he's seen the business and how stuff can be. So a lot of stuff I think that he does just more like, to put people in a good position, like, you know, um, and, 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 and he changed the game when it came to that. So my thing was, like, man, I know I'm going to be in, in the front of the line finally, because right. I'm right. I was supposed to right. work with him twice. Right. And the first time, you know, I'm like, no, nah, I can't do it. Second time, a whole other crazy shit. But now this time, 
I'm like, okay, it's on. Like, you know, stuff I was hearing was straight out the horse's mouth. Right. Everybody back there hearing it, but everybody wasn't smiling when, when they was, you know, when they peeped what they was hearing. So right. I wasn't expecting it at the time, what was going to happen after that. But, uh, you know, that caused a conflict, sort of a conflict, you know. Um, it just wasn't able to happen, you know, because, you know, a person or two ain't wanted to happen. But if it was up to the big man, it, it was da- it was done. Like the yeah. the, the fucking the, the lottery ticket was cash. Right. Was there a point though? Like th- th- there was a couple years there where where if I'm not mistaken, you were actually trying to reach Al Heyman and and it and it fell on deaf ears. Um. Well. <laughs> how, how can I explain that? I I, I ain't gonna say. Take your time. Like I'm trying to think and remember because I, you know, he from home, so I uh-huh. know how to get, you know. But uh-huh. like I say, I don't chase cats. This, this yeah. see, this the bad thing. What sometimes having, you know, you got to separate business from your morals in the streets and as a person, right? Because boxing, you can't, you know, you can't really think like that. Sometimes it was my fault for not being. Now I was aggressive at th- at at that point, but. It was connections made and it was taught. It just, it just, it was just shit that it wasn't taken well from other people. Mm-hmm. And that was more like, okay, he, you know, maybe we're going to chastise this cat for, for this. Like, you know, but we're going to do it in a way to where it ain't going to look like up. It ain't going to look as, um, as intentional. But, you know, if you own a company and you're in control of somebody's career, you could drag them through the mud easily. Right. Right. And, you know, I wasn't the kind of person to complain and say nothing. And, mm-hmm. you know, at the time, like, um, it was a horrible time, like, you know, in my life. But, you know, I just was like, damn, keeping this shit low because I'm like, all right, it's going to turn. It's going to turn. It's going to turn. I'm thinking that, you know, stuff going, you know, turn. But then you, next thing you know, years just went by. Yeah. So you may not remember me because I was on the newspaper side. And how I saw it was... Uh... Al Heyman kind of kept quiet and kind of ignored the situation that you were in because Floyd Mayweather was the cash cow. Like he didn't want to like, uh, uh, upset the apple cart, upset the apple cart and obviously chastise Floyd about not protecting his hometown hero. And, uh, and and you know what? I can't blame him for that. mm -hmm. Why is that? Because, like, like you say, that's his cash cow. It's man, this shit is so weird that, like I say, it's my fault too for not aggressively being on 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 Floyd because it was the middle people mainly that was like dirty and shit up and was like, I mean, when 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 one when the middle people when the middle person got his ear, it ain't no telling what the hell he's saying. You can't rub. I mean, dude is like a, he a Michael Jordan type figure in boxing. Do, do you How do they get there by the kind of e- by the kind of pride and ego, right? So if you rub, you could just slightly rub their ego the wrong way and word it a certain way. Like, oh man, he think we need him. Like, not now, now mind you, I said we. Mm-hmm. I was cool with the promotional situation, even though it wasn't going too good. But I'm like, you know what? It's this, it's this person in the middle that's fucking shit up. So mm-hmm. I'll let I, I, my idea was to still let him stay in, but just had this big guy, you know, come in and help him. But that that's so so that was the 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 whole thing was what he was basically it's like him being my interpreter. Like if just just say you know Spanish and, and he know he know English and Spanish. Right. Right. Kyle. Now, I only know English, so he my translator now to Floyd. Right. And the shit right. was wicked. The shit that was being done and said was, and I, I didn't catch wind. I didn't catch wind to it until I really was putting two and two together. Like, you know, so if, if the stuff being said to a person like a Michael Jordan, it kind of make you want to be like, all right, well, I ain't extending my hand on this. He gone. But like I say, I waited a little too long to get to him and be like, man, this is what the situation is. This is going on. This is what happened. But I ain't, you know, that's the wrong part of me not wanting to chase him around like all these other dudes doing. Mm. But it was my career. I really should have been more aggressive. So, can you, can you think about who was in that room 
in that locker room when you won that belt? Can you think about oh the, the, the different people that were in there? Everybody. Warren Buffett, fucking everybody. I mean, it was everybody was cheering and was happy except for it was weird to, <laughs> except for one or two people, but um I mean, you gotta think. I'm close with Floyd's family, like his mom, his kids, his his uncles, you know, because I knew him for a while. So everybody was happy for me, like, damn, you know, finally, like, you know, so um everybody was happy. Like me, me and Floyd were sharing locker rooms. So it was a big ass locker room. I had one next to his, but we were sharing one together. It was a real big one. So um, you know, it was just crazy, man, because the you know, the can you know, all the showtime cameras is back there and stuff, the pay-per-view cameras. But you know, uh, you know, the big man, he don't like, you know, everybody know he don't like being out there like that, but everybody was seeing and they were shocked. Like, I mean, you you would have thought from the the people that was asking me how I felt, I'm thinking they talking about winning the title, they talking about me hugging the big man. They like, man, how did that feel for you know to be talking to him and for him to be this happy for you and this and that? Because that's basically like somebody handing you a lottery ticket. So naturally. From what I know of Floyd, you know, um, it been stuff was rocky a year or so before that, maybe a year, but that's nothing to me. I'm like, okay, I can eat that. It's cool. I got the title of Floyd finna do this and that. Right. Use when guys win the belt with him. Mind you, he don't owe to do this at all. These just things that he do at his company. When I think one more person won a belt before me, uh, right before me, I think Ishe. You know, mm, you say, yeah. You know, do everybody got gifts, and I, I noticed when I ain't get it, it's certain stuff that that was weird to me that I know that he do just on the north regular. I'm like, man, before just back in the day, I got to turn money down if Floyd trying to get me. Right. He right. For, he hit like I'm like I'm cool, I'm good. Like you just looked out for me, like you know. So, you know, the situation was weird. Like it was just. um the wrong, the the biggest part to me was the wrong staff was hired to sum it all up. Like, yeah, I want to talk about that as well. Do yeah. you, for, for, go ahead, Kyle. No, I was gonna say. So, do you think Leonard Caldwell was one of the people that wasn't happy for you? Who you Leonard. talking about, Ellaby? Ellaby. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. Leonard, Leonard was happy for me. At at least you know, Leonard, Leonard. The the situation with him was just weird. Like it was because Leonard, he like. Leonard more like a politician. Like he he the he the smart one out the bunch if you wanna if you wanna call it that. And at least in you know in his mind, like but at the end of the day, he knew more of what was going on than Floyd. Like he knew exactly what was what. But with him, I gave him the benefit of the doubt a lot because I'm like, damn, okay, at least he trying. But when certain shit was happening, I'm like, it's just crazy now. Like, I ain't Mike Tyson. What you mean I can't get a fight? Oh, we can't get you a fight. We can't get you a fight we and i'm accepting everything i don't care how low the payday was i ain't even gonna say how low and it that'd be you know it was just crazy but no nah, leonard he was actually happy he was one of the first people that came up to me you know along with the other you know no nah, he was he was pretty happy for me at the time uh we speak about integrity and, and moral compass a lot on on this platform and i like a uh, uh I'm not Malcolm X. Martin Luther King says silence is a sin, right? And if you have Al Heyman and you have Floyd, the two most powerful black men in boxing, do you take, do you see that as like a, a like hurtful um, in a sense that, that one or the other could have stepped in and said, you know what, Mickey Bay's been an active, you know, maybe his career is kind of, slow down a little bit maybe we should pick up do you see that at all um oh for sure 100 percent. uh but here's the problem though like see it's totally separate but to me i think floyd should have had somebody like that even like i say like a a richard schaefer this just my this just my thoughts running the company like somebody that's like like you know how like top rank they got a staff like a, right you know right. he you know he don't he just oversees stuff you know he got his you know he got Todd he got this person that person um he got you know he got a good staff on him. I just think he needed a better staff that's the whole problem right. because the two are separate like a lot of people 
joint join them together, but they're separate. Like none of floor, none of the, none of the TMT fighters are with Al except for like one or two. Right. And they was already with him beforehand. They went to Floyd after, so um, it's separate. Like the other fifty fighters or sixty fighters they got, they don't even know Al or they not even signed with him. Like, right. so my thing is like, if he was if if he was more had somebody like that involved, he had the best promotional company in boxing. Like what? Right. With the intentions that Floyd had for a promotional company, if he had the right person, it'd probably be the biggest uh, company in boxing. But because of that, it's not because when you got somebody trying to pimp shit in the middle, they looking at what they can get. And they see it as a, another um, revenue stream. Like, damn, all right, instead of me just eating off of what I do for Floyd, I got all these other fighters now to where I can, you know, like I say, that cookie jar look good, but my thing is this: you could you could dip your hand in cookie jar. Just take a couple, though. Don't take them off. Like, <laughs> right, right. Go ahead and get you a couple Oreos. Like, leave leave a couple chips of hoy, though. Right, right. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, well, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I think Leonard Elderby is a fraud. You know what I mean? I think he talks a big game, and I think he knew what was going on. Um, well, he did, he did for sure. You know what I'm saying? I think I just he just full of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I think he's full of shit. He knew. He knew for sure. Like it's a lot that I mean, believe me, like it. See, it's crazy. My fault. I didn't mean to cut you off. You can go. No, back. no, no. You good. No, he knew. That's the problem. When I say middle people is is my manager, he know he know the most because he 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 controlling the pieces. So he go to him and then collectively the fence is up. Like, okay, it's us here, but let's put that fence up. So he can't, you know, get to Mayweather. But me that I hop in the fence, I, I was too wait too long. You know, that was a little bit my fault, even though I tried, but I'm like, man, I ain't finna keep chasing the grown man around like why everybody else, you know, it was just confusing. So, you know, that's why I say like, you know, I could have been more aggressive on the situation, but it's it's tricky when you got a dude that's grew up as your hero, like a big brother. You don't wanna it's it was an odd situation. You mentioned uh, about uh, money being taken and your purses changing fight week. Why and how? Um, like I say, um, the less I make, the more the more that another person make. I mean, I just you know people chose they found mine basically, right? And it was amounts that Floyd don't care about. Like you know, like I say, he. Before I signed with him, he was giving me that kind of money. Like he ain't even he ain't tripping on no little his his dollar amount. He got to be getting fifty or better for him to even be happy. Like right in ten twenty men don't even really move him. So um you know, but like I say, it add up if it's if it's you know them smaller amounts to somebody that ain't really rich. If it can get you rich, it's like shit. Well. It's me over them, one of them type of things, pretty much. Like, you know, allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly, but I know what the deal is. I ain't no way the shit was happening that was happening. But, you know, like I say, I was so silent. Like you said, what Martin Luther King said, it's true. Mm. But you, it, it was awkward. Do you do you think that uh, Lennon and Dewan was taking money off the top from your purse? Uh, allegedly, I'm going to say uh, it's allegedly. a fact. It, it wasn't, it was the fact that some of these was just ridiculous. It wasn't no way it was that little on the table. I'm going to just say that. Like, you know, I don't know if it's both or who, but I, I just know, and me even knowing Floyd, like, um, it's kind of odd for me to even think that he would know this because, like I say, them kids was in bits to him, um, but I wasn't going to him. Like you say that. What you say, silence is. Silence is a sin. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's because the reason why I ask is uh, I've spoken to a lot of man, man. Listen, I would say at least 10 TMT fighters have reached out to me since the Lonnie interview or former TMT fighters. And they and they spoke eloquently about how their purses were cut. And they said that uh, Leonard Ellaby would take the money and gamble it like like he would. He would literally take they he, he they believe allegedly. Right, right. <laughs> Allegedly, that 
that that he would take their money and basically gamble it off and and he had some some ties <laughs> with the casinos and the mob. You know anything about that? Ah, you, you damn, that's just so a lot. I know the whole story, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was in the jail, man, but I was I was on the newspaper side, so I, oh. I didn't have a YouTube channel then, so I know the story. I, between. I know that a lot of you know a lot of these cats is kids, so mm-hmm. you know they scared. They don't know what to do. They like, damn, like now imagine this. You think big money Mayweather know about this? He ain't work, them kibbles and bits, like right. So a lot of people getting the story twisted. Like I'm, it, this ain't even the blame game. I'm cool. You know, I'm blessed to still even have the, t- the talent to fight a couple more times if I want. You know, um, I'm in a good situation. I got I smartened up with my money, so I never needed them. You know, like I'm good. Like I'm, you know, I ain't filthy rich, but I'm good, good. Like I ain't, I never, I made sure that I tightened up on because I was r- running through money at one point, even what I did get. And that them just young mistakes that I made and counting, putting the wagon before the horse. You know, thinking, oh damn, I'm in it. I know this finna happen next, but when it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. You know, that shit it put me in the hole. But you know, um, I learned a lot. So um I learned a whole lot. Kyle. Now, do you do you think do you think you can repent do you think a, a relationship with you and Al Heyman could ever uh happen now? Wow. Seeing that, you know, seeing that it, it, um we got a lot of this shit on the table. We kind of know uh, some of the shit that was taking place, and I'm, I'm sure he know he's seen some interviews with you now. Do you think that uh, that relationship could be repaired? Way before this, believe me, the real people knew it was you know, but not to cut you off. But um, I mean, honestly, I ain't checking for him. I love him, and you know, that's one of my mentors by nature. You know, but you know, he from literally the same block as me. Mm. By nature, it's, you know, he a great man with a great heart. Like, I can't, no matter what didn't happen, business is business. Like, you know, um, I can't fault him for, you know, like I say, like, I, I'm, everybody make mistakes. Like, his and Floyd's, yeah, I, I chastised Floyd a little more, of course, but he did so much good for me, and it ain't like we enemies or nothing. It just ain't how it was. Like, you know, it ain't like I'm, I ain't one of these – Dudes, the steer, you know, I ain't a cheerleader, or none of that. Like, I, I'm cool without seeing him or none of that. Like, but I'm still, I'm open. He can hit my line or whatever. I ain't got no problem with him. My main problem is with my manager because he got put in a mean situation off my blood, sweat, and tears. You got 30 fighters now. You know, um, it ain't even, it, 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 it wasn't appreciated, even the big stuff that happened from his way. Or no apology, you know, sit down, like, man, my fault, like, I was a rookie. You know, I, I understand that, even though you can't, because, you know, I can't keep looking in the past. That shit would drive me insane. Like, I can't change what happened in the past. But, you know, as far as, you know, the big man, like, I ain't really checking for him, you know. But I know the jobs that I had lined up post-career wow. with not only Mayweather and guys like him, there's no way I wouldn't have been. I mean, anything could still happen, but like I say, now my focus is on Devin Haney. Like, you know, right. bless, blessings happen in disguise like that, you know, us coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing right. is promised all for the future, but the way stuff is going, who knows? I might have a fighter now that might break his record. Mm-hmm. It might be written in the stars that we both can't come up under that tree, and I was able to at least get all of that knowledge, you know, from the Mayweather's. I pretty much was the next one with the key of all that knowledge up under Floyd Jr. So, um, you know, I'm just taking it a step at a time, really. Kyle, you go. So, uh, had had uh, Floyd Sr. not got, like, kind of older, like, as far as, like, the way he got older, do you yeah. think him and Devin would still be working together? Nah. I mean, that's kind of why I came in. Mm. Well, it is why I came in. Um because I'm, I'm, other than Junior, I was with him the longest out of anybody. And I soaked it in. And I was blessed to be able to, because training is way different than fighting. Like, it's way different. I could see why you can be a great fighter and not a good trainer. It's totally different. You got to be selfless. But that always been my natural character anyway. Like, even if I knew I could be the pound-for-pound pound champion, 
I'll take a back seat if I can get 10, if I can manage or promote 10 good fighters to help 10, I'll sacrifice my one career. That's why I think when shit happened, I, you can't close the door on me because people know, like you said, with the integrity part, mm -hmm. you can you, you can put stuff out and this and that. But when people meet me, that's just one of my um, gifts is, you know, um, I, I'm blessed in some kind of way to where just being a genuine person, uh, it really paid off for me. Like just being the person I am really helped me a lot um, get back in a lot of circles. But with that being said, it was even bigger circles when stuff was good with me and Floyd, like the stuff that he told me. Um, you know, I, to be honest, I probably could have told him, Floyd, I'm, I'm going to hang the gloves up. But this he to let me do whatever I wanted. If I say I just couldn't see him not the way the relationship, you know, I, I you know, I shit, I, whatever I wanted to do would have been done just because. We never had hiccups. I never crossed them. You know, everything was just always good, like a, a family thing, a family relationship. And like, and like I say, me and his dad, you know, always been real close through the whole matter. He just not a businessman, so I didn't want to pit him against his son. Like, he knew right. it was some bullshit, but he, like, it. he knew kind of what was going on, but he ain't, that's not a strong suit. I mean, to be talking big, that's not his thing, so... How much money do you think you lost over your career? Oh, plenty of millions. I'm going to back of the fights I couldn't get just from being on the shelf. Knowing that I'm the kind of dude that'll fight anybody. Like, like I got I got a lot of heart. Like, I got it, it's stuff that that's why I'm going to come back and fight a couple more times. Even my last fight with Campos, he, he edged me on a split decision. Split decision. Now, this was to fight Tia Fimo. I was that close to being off that long. And, and winning it, that's the kind of crazy stuff I like doing. That's why I called out Tevin. Because, like, I was always one of them kind of dudes that, um, you know, I wanted all of the big fight, but I couldn't get them. It, it was either, it was it was some, the crooked shit that was going on, you know, it, I just couldn't, it, it was, uh, it was um, above my control. I tried, like, you know, and I'd have fought anybody, but when you put a fight on the table and then you could price up another fight or two down, they ain't going to fight me for that much. So it yeah. won't happen. I, I would accept it. I right. didn't care what it was. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to just knock him off and then just go from there. Like I take the short on this one, but the other fighter be like, no, nah, it ain't enough money. Cause it wasn't to be honest, because they already making the bag with Al, like, you know, or with this uh, promoter. So, yeah, you know, I lost a lot of money. You know, I, I I gained a lot when I got smarter, when I learned that you don't need millions to make millions. And I learned, you know, real estate and all of that type stuff. So I just look at it like, you know, I'm going to get it on the back end. Oh, get it on the back end. Uh, you did something that was extraordinary, though. You actually brought Floyd Sr. and Floyd Jr. back together. Can, can you talk about that? And, and the reason why I, I think that's important is at the end of the day, I mean, I I'll say this, and, and I've said it many times on this show. That was one of one of the worst TV moments that I think I've ever seen. I don't know why that made the the show. Oh but, man! But a father always needs his son, and the son always needs his father. Can you talk about how you mended that relationship back together? Um, yeah. When when I finally had signed with Floyd, uh -huh. you know, I, I I I talked to him and um. And I, I'm gonna give Floyd the credit, like I put it out there. I'm gonna give him the credit for, you know, even getting on the phone with him mm -hmm. and saying, "All right, man, come through." Because uh, I was training at different gyms, because you know, Big Floyd, of course, he wasn't really around him. He was, you know, Fifty Cent gym and different gyms at the time. So, um, you know, I brought him over, and they kind of just it, it it was, you know, he. I think the level of maturity start growing more and more. Like even now, it seemed like Floyd matured a lot just from what it seemed like in the past year or two he's saying stuff that that i ain't never really hear him say even though actions speak louder than words because a lot of cats you know could say stuff but he just buried the hatchet and they just start going from there like you know and they just start working together and um you know it just clicked they just clicked um we start coming to the gym the next day after they talk and they start working and it was like they have to talk about the past or None of that. And I was happy to see even Big Floyd and Roger being close because, yeah. 
you know, it was on the rocks. Like when I first came out, it was it was ugly. Like it was awkward and weird as hell. Like being around, being around one, I'm cool with all of them, but I'm in the middle. It was weird being in the middle of that. So, um, so that was a good thing, a great situation that, uh, cause I know how much Big Floyd loved his son more than anything. Right. right. That's the one. That's his one soft spot. That's a hard old school dude. Yeah. I- yeah, I'm I'm actually glad that it, that it, that they actually got back together and, and worked it out because it it was that was heart wrenching to hear to hear and see. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, shit. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I I just had left for something. I think I'm glad I wasn't there. I'm like, man, that'd have been the weirdest shit because to me, for people to you know, you can't control Floyd, but for people around to just watch it was odd to me. Like even Roger was kind of like trying to break it up. Like, man, you you know. Mm-hmm. But to me, for people to, but like I say, when Floyd, Floyd got that, I mean, Floyd is a Michael Jordan of boxing. So sometimes people get, they get, you know, they don't know how to approach. It's hard to, you know, a lot of people don't really, but I never had that problem with him because we never had no debate. We never, I stayed in my lane. It was never, um, I wasn't never expecting to be as big as him. He a giant, like people get. I just wanted to reach my pinnacle and for it not to happen because one guy in the middle saying, oh, no, nah, we're going to do this, do that, do this, put him on the show, all that. Allegedly, like, that's the part that just disappointed me is I know without that middle person, yeah, I missed a whole lot. Like, just not only on the boxing part, but like I say, the business side because it ain't – it wasn't no middleman with me. I can go straight and say, man, let me do this. Like, everybody already wanted me to be a commentator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, out about boxing, you could speak well when it come down to it. Like shit, you should. But a lot of opportunities was just knocked off the table, though. Has you know? ever has there ever been a offer of compensation? Um, I never really looked for one. Like, uh, it probably could have been, but like I say, the situation was awkward because it's at the end of the day. When it, Floyd, you got to think. I didn't want stuff to fall on him because I felt like I could, even though year it was years that went bad, the the stuff that he did, the knowledge live in me that I got from that family. Right. I wouldn't be training Devin if it wasn't for the Mayweather family. I wouldn't. I'm comfortable as hell in any boxing circle because of what I learned from them. You see now everybody trying to copy him, even though it's different than it looked from the being on the inside, but. You know, it's weird because that lived in me, you know, the the Mayweather system and what I, you know, it's just a part of me. So it was hard to really um, to want to do something like that to him. Like, even though I had my shortcomings, you know, um, it's it's so much good memories with him, too, that I'm like, man, fuck it. You know, I just take the hit like, but D, I'm but I'm disappointed in how it happened. Right. From middle pieces, that's that's my thing with him. Is like, why, why not a better squad than you? Who you are? Like, why not hire? You can. It's bigger than your family. Right. Like, why not hire? Uh, di- like you know, you got big, you got companies. This, like, believe me, his with his smartness when it comes to boxing, his expertise, he could single handedly make boxing like boxing is on the pedestal right now. But I'm saying, like, man, but I can't. He been in the gym since he was a baby, like literally. So to me, at a certain point, he wanted to when he not in the ring, he not training, he wanted to escape. And I was giving him that. I wasn't finna, I ain't want to come be chasing him around, get telling him my problems and this and that. Which I think, you know, that was my mistake. But um, yeah, no, nah, I never really looked at it like that. Like, you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted Cast to move out my way and let the situations happen that was supposed to happen. That would have been my conversation. Like, man, let this, if this cat want to do something with him, let him do something with him. Right. You know, I wouldn't even, I'm going to be real. I wouldn't have mind giving up compensation myself. Like, man, let me go about my business. Y'all can get a percentage. This is stuff that I express, but it wasn't to the, to, to Floyd. It was in the middle. But it's like, nah, 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 all right. Or they or or like I say, data interpreters. So it's like, oh, okay, we'll see. Let, let me see how how this, but why can't you speak for yourself? If you my manager, why you gotta keep going to him? And then you're not going in the genuine manner, you twisting shit, saying that I'm saying different shit. 
because you know how to rub this dude ego the wrong way. So, you know, when I start getting wind of that, I'm like, no wonder, like, you know, because I ain't, you know, like I say, I ain't, dude just fucked up when it, he shouldn't have been in his bed. That's all I'm going to say. Like, it ain't like he the devil. We was friends outside of the ring and he just ain't know what he was doing. But if you, if you know I'm taking a hit because of that, why not want to work with fucking Vince McMahon? Right. Or work with what 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 date with with Stern, the NBA cat, like you know what I'm saying. Like you you got offers right there. But when you go twist stuff, you don't do this to Michael Jordan. You don't tell Michael Jordan that what you were saying to him, but it was to hurt me though. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the the question I have I, somebody got to tell us how in the fuck did this dude? I mean, dog, wow. I got like this shit up, but I gotta, I gotta say this shit for real. We gotta ask somebody because Leonard Ellaby, or we like to call him Leonard Caldwell. You know what I mean with his soft ass? Man, uh, y'all can call him whatever y'all want, man. Because yo, he had to have something to do with this shit. Because how do you, how? Out of all the people that could have managed you, how did they, how did this nigga get the job? You yeah. know what I mean? I, I just gotta know. Somebody got we gotta get to the bottom of that it's, shit. That's you know what I mean? Like thing. how the fuck did he get this job? Listen, that's my only knock with, with Floyd. That's my only knock. It's like why you put this cat in my way. That's it. That 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 that's it. Like now, my knock what my managers that he never sat down with me and kept it real with me like you know you supposed to come from the streets as well and had this integrity but you doing some the shit you doing now yeah Leonard man he definitely he was the one that was talking to, to the manager they was dealing together so that's why I say the fence was the fence was built behind them so it was you know it was them two and in the fence and Mayweather was behind the fence all of a sudden they were faking the funk. Like, I, like I think they were pinning. They were creating game plans within themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, like, you know, like, yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy. Like, and, and, and Floyd, you know, later on, he started to catch wind and he see what's going on. And, and but like I say, he he didn't live boxing so long. He just when he not when it's not his career, he just don't. He got to have a real passion to want to do this like if so it would have been the best company in boxing but he don't have that passion because he was too good in the ring he didn't fulfill what he fulfilled he want to he want another life somewhat mm. outside of boxing like now if he take that one or two dudes at one time you know like tank or whatever you know um i know it's bumps in the road with that but um I just think my whole thing, if I had to sum it all up, it's like you should have picked a different staff. Like if you would have had the staff that Golden Boy had at first, remember they was running shit for a right. while. They had an excellent staff. Like um and, and, and top rank got an excellent staff. Like it's just staff with, with Mayweather, like the staff, but the staff hurt is hurting other fighters. Like you said what you said, not me, because you heard about all the a lot of the other fighters. Right. You know, it's even more stuff, you know, that 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 you know that that I ain't even really saying, but it's it's you. I can't say that you ain't telling the truth. Yeah, but I know a lot more. But 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 you didn't answer that part, so I'm not even gonna push it. I'm not even wait, gonna push it a little wait, more. <laughs> wait, hold on. What you talking about? Uh, I, I I said there's a lot more, but I'm not gonna push it because you didn't push the other, so I'm not gonna push it. Wait, like, when you said well, answer, what what part you talking? Oh, about the about Linda about, about, gambler. Yeah, oh, yeah. Linda, no, yeah, Linda, he said he. No, he he definitely he see he the politician though he was he was the one I at least I'm like okay if, if Floyd is on the other side of the fence at least Leonard is is more yeah. he older he more so with him it's like all right he seemed like he was trying like all right man I I think that he felt guilty having to deliver messages sometimes but at the same time you knew he benefited from it though he was it, the most jealous that's the thing he no, was the I'm, most he was no, the most jealous if no, you think about it. Like the more you talk about it, you can tell now <laughs> the relationship that you and Floyd had. He wanted that. He wanted that. He wanted the, the the relationship that you and Floyd had. That's what he wanted. He wanted to be that the guy that Floyd came to and talked to and all the shit. That's what he wanted. 
and him and, and the punk ass cousin, they had they had they, they got in cahoots because they both was jealous because they wanted that relationship. That's what it comes down to. You know what I mean? They can have all the money in the world, but they soft. You know what I mean? They wanted your position, even though the, the position that they was in could have been better. But they wanted to be in your position because the way that Floyd viewed you, they wanted to be viewed by Floyd the same way. And they could never be viewed like that because they soft. You know what I'm saying? Go pick that, go get his goddamn bag, Leonard. Chump ass nigga. But go ahead. And that's the thing. See, I heard it through shade of me and this on, on some other shit. This one I don't even care about. Cause at first I'm like, man, you know what? Like Leonard, he did try to help, but he did it. He he slick, he the politician, he slick. See, he older. So, like, and I, it's crazy because I run into Leonard all the time. Like, he the only one I really, shit, I just ran into him probably like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I ain't saying I did nothing to him or nothing because, you know, he ain't really. Well, like, he's, in, he's in a well, fight. See, he want to slap people, though. <laughs> he want to slap. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? One Period. Thing about, one thing about it, less. it was, fix their mouth with, <laughs> with them type problems with me because, you know, I'm the coolest cat in the world, but, you know, um. I got a family too, and mine. I don't even want in Vegas. I'm gonna just put it like that. Do you think that, like, genuine people, like, 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 how are you in your in in, in this interview? Uh, your disposition, and even on Trill, and uh, your disposition is so like uh, welcoming. Is is that the right disposition to have when you're dealing with the business side of boxing? Um, no, nah, you got to put your personal self. You can't be how you are. Really? You don't want to be an asshole, but you know, you got to know how to like, you, you got to damn near be a character, like a, like an alter ego almost because it could hurt you sometime. Like, you know, which I think me trying to be like too integrity this integrity that like you know and and, and that yeah it kind of fucked me up but um it's just an odd story because i'm i'm i vividly paint a picture in my head like i'm there again mm -hmm. right so when i'm speaking on it i'm like damn because it was the weirdest moment in my life like, i've been through some shit like you know mm -hmm. but this was like a, a weird thing because you're supposed to be on your way up with this man behind you and you at the worst point of your life, it was the oddest thing ever to where I didn't even know. I didn't know whether I was depressed or not. I wouldn't have known because I'm used to fighting through and keeping shit quiet. I didn't know if I even, I didn't know if I was going through something, really. Right. And and, and you know how I see it from 50,000 feet? Um, I see Al Heyman, black man, Floyd, black man, Leonard Ellaby, black man. Dewan Blake, black man. No one stepped in and said, "You know what? Can we do right?" I'm. A, I ain't gonna lie to you. One definitely wanted to. Uh, but but you said it before. Yeah. Cash cow. Yeah. One debt. So I'm like, I'm. I'm gonna fall back. I ain't even gonna make it uncomfortable on him. Mm -hmm. You know, he tried. He trying. He doing what he can. But the shit was just tarnished. Like, you know, you know, my manager already fucking just took the shit and just shred, just fucked yeah. it up. So I'm, I'm about to fall back. Like, I ain't. But now, another thing that you said, I don't mean shit. That race stuff, when it comes to business, too. Yeah. It's who got the best plan for you. Like, right. Earn is doing incredible for Devin. Like, right. I agree. I mean, it's different strokes for different folks. Like, dudes care about the money. And, you know, Eddie is, you know, Floyd is, I mean, Devin is living. Like, he, Devin is, is I mean, he looking out for Dev. Like, hey, I mean, they got some shit. Like, I mean, you can see, like, the platform you fighting on, the money you getting. I mean, that race, you you can't even look at that when it comes to business because we all know in, in, in the black community, you get torn down by your own people if they're not the solid ones. When we now, when we solid, it can't get no better. When right. we got to but we always get them infiltrating type people that that will help kill Malcolm X or this person that or whatever. Just to make an analogy, we always get them suckers that get put in position instead of solid dudes. You you know when you solid, it's just weird how the weirdos always getting the torch to me. Like, 
it, it's it's just hard to uh it's it's just hard to fathom that because I as I I tell everybody since my son's been born I've really like turned the corner not I'm not perfect but I've turned the corner in terms of integrity you know what I mean like like just being honest about if the time I'm going to be there I'm not if I say if I'm 10 minutes away I'm 10 minutes away you know and I'm getting better and better as it you know I'm definitely far from perfect but I I, I just think like for the younger generation like because your story is going to hit home to to current fighters and the goal is to uh at uh regardless of my personal dissatisfaction with PBC or any or any other entity that 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 your voice is going to ring in, in some of these young fighters heads and what would be some of the advice like you would give a future olympian that's going to sign with a promoter uh, I would say um, get a mentor, somebody that's more mature than you, that you trust. Not that they're going to do the business for you, just to kind of hear stuff out along with you. Like, you know, um, whether it's an uncle, whether it's a dad, they might not know business, but they can be a, a good. Like, um, not saying that I was a great judge of character, so I can't blame that at all. But you need to have an outside ear sometime just to make sure you're making the right decision because you could be making the wrong decision. Like I made a couple of times, but I'm thinking it is from a guy in my early twenties or 20 years old or whatever. So um, you need to have somebody mature that, that you trust. It just got a lot of game to give you the game and, 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 and give it to you real and wrong. Uh, because a lot of people do got shortcomings. Like, like you say, you say PBC, mm -hmm. they pay fighters great, mm -hmm. but when you look at they, they, a lot of cats probably not just as active, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so different strokes for different folks. Like top rank might be good for this person. Right. And PBC might be good for this person, but it's hard for a young man to really decipher that. Um, I think that's the thing. It need to be um, more guys, you know, even like yourself, like just, it don't even got to be, a person that's really a manager in the game, but somebody just got that got knowledge and that that's still mature because you could make an immature decision, right? And then that can hurt you for many years. Like you know that happened to me early on. Like it wasn't a personal thing; just a bad decision of who I signed with that can knock you back years, years. You know, thank God I was just always disciplined and um, you know, kept my tools sharp. But I would say that, like, make sure that. You can't look at another person's career and base their career as yours. Like a lot of people look at Floyd and want to sign with him to make an example because of what he done. Floyd deserved the people hero for what he done in the ring. Right. But is he a good good promoter? Is, is Mayweather promoter? No. Is Mayweather promotion the good promotional company? Nope. Then I say that. Like, yeah, Floyd is a great fighter. Should, should you can you learn from him? can you watch him can you but he don't run the company you so when people do certain decisions you can't look at one person and think because he got this and it's going that way it's gonna go that way for me you gotta know okay my my this guy might sign with top rank he might sign with eddie he might sign with al he might sign with floyd it might be a good situation for somebody to be with floyd but at the same time floyd is a great fighter top rank is a promotional company. PBC is a promotional company. They don't, they never fought. Eddie Hearn never fought. So he not, like they thinking this stuff straight from bit from a business perspective. Cause they never, I don't think that fighters run promotional companies good to be honest with you. Like, I mean, look at the track record. How many fighters try to promote? <laughs> That's a good point. And look what happened. Like, Golden Boy came close, but look what happened with that. Not saying they don't still got a few, but when you done fighting, you, you really want to break. You not really, you don't have the same passion to make somebody else's career as big as yours, especially a bunch of people. It's not about one or two people at a time. You got, if you got 60 fighters, all of them got to be on a rotation. You can't pay attention to one or two, and then it's 50 of them on the shelf. How they going to pay the bills? Think about it. But that's, to me, these fighters need to chill out trying to promote this promotion that promotion chill 
if unless you're doing it for yourself to where it's like okay for tax purposes for this purpose that but other than that don't try to sign no fighters if if you're not going to put into it what you were putting to yourself oh uh 50 cent for Mayweather. were you around uh when that relationship yeah yep now do you think that if it, if him and 50 cent would have got together do you think that would have been a, a better situation than Mayweather promotions? Oh, hell yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. If they could have buried the hatchet, definitely, man. It would have been it was a good idea to me. Cause when when you know my brother was hanging out with 50 a lot at the time and he wanted to sign me, but at the time Floyd was in prison, so I'm I'm gonna just wait till he get out. <sighs> so we can do it together. Like I don't, you know, I'm not gonna sign with you until he get out because he it was more like yeah like a joint thing i'm like i'm gonna just wait till he get out but yeah hell yeah 50 is a man i think it would have went great like they probably would eventually clash because it's just them two them damn you got 50 you know and then you got floyd they just gonna clash but if they put like both for who they are and they greatness of what they do and he let 50 really if he would have let 50 kind of but 50 did, I ain't even going to lie, I, he did do some stuff to where Floyd ain't have a choice to kind of do what he did. Like, I ain't going to lie, because I've I seen it for my own eyes. So, But sometimes um, things can be, I think they should have sat down instead of just going at each other and kind of having a, it was a friendly competition. It's like they beefing, but they not. But they both got strong personalities and want to take over, so. It was a little odd to me, like, um, but I think that 50 probably should have followed his lead a little more because he was just coming into the business, like, you know, versus just signing cats without him. Like, when he was in, you know, when he was in prison, I would have waited to got out and then start talking about the company. I wouldn't have did it. I wouldn't have did it if I was 50, you know, from that's what I remember from from when I was talking to 50 and and when. Ford was in prison and when he got out and we met up and we talked and, and we went out to eat dinner and he we chopped it up about the situation. And he was like, yeah, man, um, this why this happened with me and 50 and that happened. He His side was more valid. It's just that Floyd, like when he chest target, he going to chest, he going to George Foreman test chest. I think that if he just did it, look, you know, it was just weird. Like Floyd, if he chest target, he want to prove a point sometime. And sometimes I think his point is a little too, you know, it's a little too hard sometimes, I think, you know. Um, and I think now I could see him. It seemed like he 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 changed that a little bit because, like, he think about who he is in the ring and what make him great, being competitive, him not wanting nobody. But you can't, you can't spill that into personal life. So it's like somebody do something to you, sometimes they don't know what you know. You can't really, you know, just just put a fucking like a to a tornado on him. Like, all right, he did this. I'm about to white. I'm about to work. You know, you gotta realize who you are. Like, damn. Like, all right, I am who I am. Let me hear him out for a minute. Let me versus being the fighter that you are in the ring. Like, you know, you know that's that's how I can kind of say. It. But I think it was that that situation went both ways though. But to answer your question, man, I think it'd have been. They would eventually clash, though, I think, but it would have been a, a crazy company as long as it lasted. Do you think, oh, before I ask that, um, Marky Dan said, yeah, he's writing a book. He's writing a book. He's going to come back and yeah. write the book. And, and you got to do a documentary. You got to do a visual on it, too. You got Kyle in here that do documentaries. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, Fred. Yes. The thing about uh, uh, Mickey Bay, man, is when you meet him, dog, you feel like you like I got the same type of personality, so like it felt like me and him known each other for twenty years, man. You know what I mean? That's that's the type of personality he got, man. We when we met uh, out in Sac at a uh, Amari Jones fight, man. I felt like I known that man for twenty years, man. And, and to be honest with you, that been a blessing in my life that I get that with everybody. So that made me strong when it came to business. It had to be somebody to get in the middle because that's just you know. I think I don't know. Uh my Western Pizza, my mom, she died last year, but she was like that. All she did was gave, 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 was a, the nicest person ever. I think that 
between her and my dad's side, it kind of, I had to fire enough to fight. Like if I flip, I'm gonna flip all the way, mm. but stay on this side. And that was always my, um, one of my best attributes was getting along with people. Like I, I got out of robbing, shoot all kind of shit just from that. Like, you know, I've been to prison before to where, I mean, it was just on me being genuine, a genuine person. I treat people how I want to be treated. That's my motto in life. Like, you know, and I never look at a person as bigger than the other. Yeah. You might be a great basketball player. You might have money from just the crab that you, do but you could be a fucked up person that don't mean that because this dude work at walmart he should be treated different so that's i always went by that saying like you know treat the the janitor just like the ceo and right. one person i seen do that i think that i and that's why i like him a lot is jay prince i bet he was like, like that. that i always paid attention to the people i was around and i learned a lot from them guys like See, with Floyd, I didn't learn so much outside of boxing in the ring. I learned something, but with guys like Jay Prince, I always pay attention. Like, okay, let me see. All right, we just met Michael Jordan or we just met Jay Z or this person. He treat them literally the same as a, 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 as a waitress, literally. Like, mm. I mean, talk to him the same. He and and he was like that, a consistent person with everybody. And I'm like, dang, this is probably why he got so much respect and so much love because he don't, unless you do something to him, you know, and it got to go to a certain level. Other than that, like when I, when I'm around people like that and I see the character of the people that made it big for a long time, I always wanted that. Like the villain character just wasn't me. Like I can play it if I got to, but I'm saying my thing always came from friendships and from guys like, man, we like this kid. So, you know, um, let's do this and let's do that. Like, you know, that's why it was kind of hard for me to really go at, at the company the way I should have. Because, you know, I was used to that always playing in my favor, being a, a genuine person. But it's business, like you say. You got to be different when it comes to business. Do, do you think Floyd, 50, and Heyman could have worked together? No, because that was part of the problem, to be honest. Mm -hmm. No. I don't think it would have worked. You got to humble yourself when you're dealing with Al. I'm just being real. Mm -hmm. Let the giant, the dude that's really the giant, like, let him work. Like, you know, um, we know Floyd was becoming the giant at the time, but I'm saying the giant on another level. Like, you know, he don't even got to say what all he got and what he own and what he do. Like, sure, you know, because you, you know, you be hearing about everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know shit that he into. Yes. It ain't, it's not, it's beyond boxing, it's beyond, but with his character is the perfect kind of person to be in boxing, but like I say, it can be better staff members there too. Right. Because if it, 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 it need to be, when you got a whole lot of fighters, you got to have a good staff. Like, you know, I'm not saying he don't, but like top rank, Eddie Hearn, they seem to have good staff that's, especially, you know, top rank, they the oldest in the game. They the, um, um, you know, the oh, old nice. Company. Yeah. So it's done professionally. Like, you know, um, yeah, Al's company is too, but sometimes he gonna get hits because he's not in touch with most of these fighters. So it matter what the middle people doing, once again, like mm -hmm. are they doing what they supposed to do? Right. Al the name probably half his fighters. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important uh to me for guys to have a solid team, like you know, with better qualifications because, like, you can't get in the NBA or NFL without having certain qualifications. They're not just throwing shit and let it stick to the wall. Like, right. and to me, that's kind of the problem with boxing. Like, they just, anybody can get in. If you get with the right fighter, you can just jump in. I mean, it's kind of like the wild, wild west a little bit. It's a beautiful sport, but the business is the worst business ever. Kyle? Uh, can, can, can you go in depth? Uh, with being around Jay Prince, his personality, the way he is, uh, versus being around Leonard Ellaby and Floyd, that camp, and what's your relationship like with Jay Prince now? Oh, it's cool. It's a, we got a good relationship. Like you know, I don't, I don't see him as much like I used to. You know, I used to, I moved down to Houston with him, 
and we was together all the time. Whenever he flew somewhere, five times out of ten, I was going to be with him. Like, damn near he treated me like a son, pretty much. I mean, I didn't been in some – I didn't seen a lot. I didn't seen a lot of conversations. I didn't slept in the next bedroom next to his for years. Like, I mean, Jay just to me – you know how you say that Southern hospitality, that Southern thing like that. He just a real humble dude. Just stuff I see him do. Like, um, it ain't for the uh, public. Because now when I was with him back then, guys like y'all knew him. He wasn't known like he is today to the general public because, you know, his son got hot and he started managing Drake. That's how he got kind of more famous to the general public from his kid. Right. Having Drake's Jay liked it like that, though. Like he, man, I mean, it's times like he was so humble that it humbled me. Like Hmm. it kept me humble. Like, damn, this dude got this and he willing to fly. He ain't even really, he never even wanted to fly first class unless I asked him to. I'm like, Jay, like, shit, it's just fine. Man, he'd be looking for regular coach seats or, or buddy passes. I'm like, Jay, you worth like a zillion dollars, man. Go ahead and get them uh, the first class. <laughs> all right, all right. Like, he'd get it because I'm like, I want to fly first class, so he'd get it. Or if, or if we he got a fleet of damn cars, so yeah, he, he might want to drive just the regular. I'm like, man, he like, which one you want to? I'm like, man, yes, man, juice that uh, Phantom up. Like, why are we finna ride in the Impala? Like, but he just like a, a um, real good, genuine dude. Um, I think that's why he lasted so long in the game because it seems he's pretty much signed people based off the how he get along with them and their character. If you notice, he don't just sign anybody. It, it'd be more of a, you know, um, like how he feel around you. Like, is this cat solid? Is he? How do I feel around him? He don't just sign guys just with talent, like because I've been around. And I would wonder, like, why you ain't signed this cat or that cat? And he like, it just wasn't there. Like, you know, the energy wasn't there and this and that. So, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now, as far as Leonard, now Floyd, would, it was always a good experience. Floyd, to me, is like a, a big kid in the candy store, like, that could just box his ass off like a wizard. Like, a, if you had to say, like, <laughs> with his family, period, like, like, it's like, when it, like if you said create a boxing family, that's that's what I feel like was they called and like I mean it's no way to explain how how number one how his dad even you know he had great teachers as well you know the the Dale Williams and Eddie Futches and cats like that but to spin it make up his own routines off of that and for Floyd to be as good as he is and his uncle and I just think that. They just boxing like Floyd was a big kid outside of boxing because he didn't really he liked to play he liked to have fun probably to catch up on stuff that he didn't do because he was in the gym all of his life so I mean he he loved boxing he loved money you know that's the way to explain him is he loved money and boxing like he he just loved money and boxing Leonard I never was really around him a lot like I just was around him if, if 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 need be. Floyd wasn't really around him like that unless it's gym time or something like that. Like maybe way back in the day, like but outside the ring, you know, Leonard, I never really we talked and you know we talked a lot. Leonard is Leonard is kind of he's a smart man, but he don't I don't think he used it to I think that he could use he could have used it for the better. But I think that he can't do what he want to do fully anyway. Mm-hmm. Like even if he wanted to, I don't. I know situations where he tried to do shit even for me and wants to. But you can't undo some shit that allegedly you might have had a part of doing. You might have right. felt bad later. Like damn. Right. Man. Once we start talking later, I think that he didn't know just what kind of individual I was. Right. Like you said, you might not have knew. I fell back from the media and everything, deleted my social media. Because going up against that, I mean, going up against a giant like that, I ain't even want to get the wrath for that. So I'm, I'm going to just fall back and go silent for a long time. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, Floyd, I mean, even if it ain't a problem, like people think you're going to get blamed and get, you're going to get the short end of the stick, whether it's yo, you can get, sh- like, anything can happen where you know it ain't. You're going to get the, the blunt of the blame. Like, and, so I think after a while, I think Leonard, when me and him kind of did start talking more, I think he was like, damn, like, 
uh, shit, like, damn, I think that sometimes he, he did seem like he probably, whatever was going on with my manager, I think better stuff would have happened if he was in place uh, other than my manager, but at the same time, you can't undo stuff that you had a part of, allegedly. Yeah. Anybody could feel guilty. There's people that murder people that, yeah, once they get jail time, then, they, then it's like, damn, I regret it, of course. But you probably didn't know what my goals was like when you start knowing what my goal was and what i wanted to do with my money you can't help but to be like damn like shit like you know if you had any part of any even if your hand was in it a little bit like damn this is what he wanted to do like he knew you know but i was doing cool enough to where the fans go i mad he say oh are you doing good you you know yeah. i still yeah. have bentley's and money in, but you don't understand i'm still getting outpaid by my opponent six to eight times, like and shit. Hey, so that ain't right. Like I might not be saying it. Yeah, I might. I, I might know how to get sponsors and this and that because the Mayweather TMT thing. It was easy to do that. I ain't even gonna lie. Like if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to do what I was able to do. What grade would you give TMT as a whole promotional company? And like a, I say like a C. A C. Which ain't good when you got Mayweather. You you shouldn't be a C. Like nothing that Floyd touch, he don't touch stuff that ain't an A plus. That's how you know either this ain't a passion of yours or you did hire the wrong team. He don't he real he real like when it comes to boxing, he like real um he don't want nothing mediocre. I don't care whether it's a pair of gloves. I know when you look on the thing, you see a line of gloves, a line. Yeah. Yeah, he want the best of the best. These gloves, the best. It's what I'm wearing today. He don't shortchange nothing when it comes to boxing. But I just don't think the passion obviously can't be there because you got so many fighters, you can't overlook them. So my thing is add to the team and let them, but let them do their thing. No, mm. that's crazy. That that he wants the best, and I've and and, and I'm gonna just quote some fighters. I don't know if they want me to say their name, but. <laughs> They would say, man, he treat his girls better than he treat his fighters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. It's just so tricky because somebody can, they always look at the one or two good things that happen, like with me. Oh, well, this happened. You look at, you got to look at an eight, nine year window, really more than that. I ain't going to count even how long I've been around. I'm talking about just when I was with the company. So uh -huh. y'all brag about one or two or three decent fights in a seven, eight year window. You got to think about that. Like, that's not – he got to be fully behind your career for it to go right. real smooth, but he don't – I don't think that he got – his girls, his women, they around him. So they around him all day, every day. So with him, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like, yeah, if you around, yeah, it's like, oh, shit, come on, huh? I'm about to buy you this watch. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. Mm. Everybody else got a watch. Right. Man, on everybody cars. I'm good. I already got the a couple whips i'm straight mm -hmm. you know so he oh. he's a real giving person but on the flip side of that it's just a it's a you know you don't want to be on the on the on the bad side or nothing right. but i'm gonna just put it like that because it ain't nothing you could do with that type of name you know anything but it's just too many if, if, if somebody playing interpreter like i said and you know how to play on this dude emotions Mm -hmm. You can go say, oh, man. Right. I, I need help. He said, we need help. <laughs> what? He said, I need help? Like, oh, all the shit I did. So you, so that's the kind of little sneaky shit that, that people do is try to, because he don't forget nothing. Like, dude, memory is sharp. Like, he remembers stuff from 30 years ago. Like, he remember verbatim. Like, stuff I wouldn't even think he remember. He would say, like, man, I remember this happened, that happened. I'm like, damn, like, this dude remember word for word certain stuff like yeah. so rub a dude like that a certain way it, he you know it, it can go bad for you uh what's your reaction to a lot of the tmt fighters leaving you got badu jack left uh martinez just went to top rank jaylion love is over there with uh um jake paul jake paul the company realizing that it's not Mayweather like we thought. Yeah, it's his company, but it's not. It's not really. 
it's under his name. It's not really ran by him like that. So, you know, um, you can't use, you know, it got to be the right people to, it got to be the right people with the right intentions to be using that kind of big name. Like, if you got the wrong people, it's a wrap. Like, you know, um, now what's the name? He did get to get a hell of a lot of fights uh, by Badu. Like, he built it. Like, mm -hmm. he's happy for him. He's a great dude. You know, I'm glad he didn't have a manager that I had. Uh, that just go to show you how, able, how he was able to keep getting big-ass fights and all of that because he didn't have the middle people. That fence wasn't put up, so that's the prime example right there, you know. But he was able to go. It was harder for me to even be able to leave, to be honest with you. It was it was like you would have thought I did something. I slept with a dude. Wife who did something. I mean, dudes just ain't want to let me go. Like, I'm talking about mutually. I would have paid. That's that's the part. I was like, that was my only thing. Like, man. It wouldn't let you buy out your contract? Man, it took a while to be able to, you know, part ways, but after you didn't drag a dude through the mud with her, you know, sure. alleged you didn't personally talk to people and tell them don't do this, don't. That's the part that really I was disappointed. At least let me go my way. Like, you know, even if you're even if even if if, if it would have been said like, man, huh, we want a percentage of your fights, I would have did it. Because my thinking is tomorrow ain't promised. Like, right, you know, I'm ready to, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm helping my parents, but not the way I could. They never asked me for a quarter the whole time. My box or nothing. Them, I don't got one of them families where you got leashes. Damn. But I, I start feeling guilty. Like man, shit can be even better for them. Like and and that's the part that disappointed me when I expressed that. When I expressed that to them while I was doing this shit, while I was in the rush. I you know, like I say, last year it hit home when yeah. when that did happen with my mom. Your mom. Right. I kind of feel something coming. Years before, I'm like, man, I gotta hurry up, you know. And, and but at the same time, even when I wanted to help, she like, I can't do it because I don't even know when you gonna fight again. Mm -hmm. It was people in the streets here, and back there. Oh man, we heard that you blackballed and this and that. And I mean, I had dudes ready to, you know, I ain't even gonna say, but like, go crazy for real. But it was just stuff I was keeping silent. But it was blatant. That's that was my problem, like man. At least say, all right, we gonna let him. If, if, if I ain't this and I ain't that or whatever, not that that was saying, oh, go let me bump my head. Mm. But you know I'm not. You know I'm serious about boxing. I don't bullshit or do none of that. You know I'm going to um, do what I'm supposed to do. And you know people fuck with me heavy. So it, I'm going to be in a golden situation. But for me to be held back, which I was, like, I'm not even finna sugarcoat that. I did get held by one of all of the fights. And I wanted, that's the part that, that, that really I was mad about is like, damn. Um, Did you go to Floyd and ask for a buyout? Pretty much like, yeah, I, I tried to, you know, but that's you know, at the time he was like, well, damn. that's when he was like, you know, I waited a little long, but that's when he was like, man, you ain't happy with me and what I'm doing is that he like, well, that's your manager. So go ahead and handle him. God damn. But, but I guess, he hired the manager. Right. I think that he know he made a mistake, to be honest with you, because this shit that he said that I ain't even going to say on here mm -hmm. by all that. You know, he said it like he, you know, he made a mistake trying to do a family favor. You know, uh, it fell on me. But I'm like, Floyd did enough to where. Well, I'm going to tell you what I know. Floyd knew that uh one he wasn't doing his job yeah and two he was taking money yeah and and okay. i and i've heard it from as close as a source as as possibly can be and um and so my my wish for the whole situation is that Floyd would have would have taken charge would have said uh Dewan, step aside let me help out this brother I've known for 15 years at the time or 14 years at the time right. and and step in. Why even had shit like that? Yeah, and help this guy on the undercard. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know. I guess it was for the first time blood was thicker than water a little bit. And mm. it was the stuff that was delivered to him. Like I, when I mentioned, when I mentioned stuff that you don't say to a, 
a Michael Jordan thinking person. You don't say certain shit unless you want to fuck a person career up. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if y'all talk to, to a guy like Floyd, it'd be easy to say some shit to fuck me up indirectly because he don't, he not used to that. So with me, it probably was a shock. Like, huh, you said he said this? He probably, he believed him at the time because he was talking to him and I wasn't. That's his family. Now, it took a while for him to realize because other people around was like, nah, like, you know, shit ain't right when other family members get to speaking up and this and that. Then he like, man, we'll go ahead and, you know, I'm your promoter, so. Didn't Floyd Sr. want to fight Dewan? Uh, yeah. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was what the fuck going on? Like, what? Yeah, I remember like, that. I remember like, that. Getting paid like this and why you not getting the big fights like was promised? Mm -hmm. He like, we're the old man that talking about Al. Mm -hmm. Like, we're the uh, old man that said, you know, he's going to do this and that. The one that deal with Floyd, like, Floyd, why don't you put it together and this and that and this? But like I say, once you tell Michael Jordan some shit that you want to tell him. Yeah. In front of his mind, like, all right, he said this. It was foreign. So he, he never heard me complain in, my, in, in, in life. I ain't even complaining now. Like, he never heard me complain about nothing he ever did for me. If he, if, if, however he wanted stuff to be, it was going to be like that because I always trusted him. This is Floyd directly because right. it wasn't the time that he didn't come through for me. So that's why the, the story is bittersweet because it's like, you know, even this, if there's times I don't hear from him, he might be moving around or this or that, but bam, he come through. Because I know, okay, he ain't forget about me. But I didn't need an interpreter in a way. Like, why now do right. I need it? Never needed it before. Like, I was already, you know, I'm talking to you and I'm back in the hood. Like, you know, my you talking to my family on the phone. Like, it was just shocking to my parents and my family how shit was going. Because it's like, damn, this Floyd, like him, mm -hmm. he the first one that, you know, other than, you know, after Jay and Emmanuel Stewart, that, I mean... Right. He talked to my probation officer 30, 40 minutes on the phone and all like, I mean, it was just, it wasn't no problem. It was never a problem. So it was foreign probably to him and to me. Kyle, let me get to the super chat. Slugger, yeah. Slugger Sam says, Fred, I've been supporting you. How long now? Where's my wrench at fam? Team barbershop rally. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. Um, the thing that I'm kind of, the thing that pisses me off though, and uh, me and my homeboy, we had the same conversation. You know, conversations rule the nation. You know what I'm saying? I think that communication is, is always key. Yeah. And I feel like you got to come to somebody and ask them for yourself, like, what's, what's, what's going on? And yeah. for him not to come to you to see what was really going on, if you said the shit that he thought you said, I think that's bootsy. You know what I'm saying? I think that's lame as hell. And I think that uh they did you a great disservice um by not coming to you you know uh and was it a great philosopher frederick s hawthorne uh you got to be a man you know what i'm saying i believe in being a man at all times you know what i'm saying oh, and, 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 and what i'm saying is if 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 i got a problem with a nigga i'm coming to your door step and i'm gonna knock on your door and right. i'm gonna see what's going on Yo. I'm not finna go around and tell this guy, that guy, what's going on. I'm going to come to you. You know what I'm saying? Win, lose, a draw. You know? I got to, I got to, I got to say what's on my mind. I got to, I got to say what's on my heart. Right. And if uh, what I tell you, what was said to me, and you say, man, that ain't never happened. You knew me for, for damn near 20 years. You think you're going to let, you're going to just let that shit ride like that? That's why I can't respect it. You know? That's why I, I don't respect it at all. Because... If you felt like I, I had a problem with you, you should have came to me as a man. I don't give a fuck how much money you got. I don't care how much power you have. Yeah. You should have came to me because before you had all any of this shit, we was rocking. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's some bullshit. A hundred percent. That's the weird part to me was like I had to feel the shit because I know him good. Yeah. So it was said deliberately, but it was certain things. I'm like, hold up. Like this shit ain't like him. Like, you know, the certain ignoring and spending me in this type shit you know that i had to kind of get it from that it wasn't like direct but you know so i'll tell you uh, uh I'm, I'm gonna tell you two examples and i'm not gonna mention any names because they're still sources of mine but um about six years ago six years ago 
five years ago, somewhere in there, um, someone called me and said, Fred, can you help this fighter go to top rank? And I mean, I didn't have a great relationship with top rank. You know, I know Bob, but it wasn't as strong as it is now. And I was like, okay, I'll do my best and I'll see if I see if I can get him to fight. Obviously, it's not you, but I'm just saying. And then a couple years later, I get another call, which was probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, um, uh, they said, hey, Fred, do you think you can help this TMT fighter go to uh, uh, your guy, um, Eddie Hearn? Yeah. Eddie Hearn. And uh, I'm like, what's wrong? And, and, I, and I said, and I said, Al is not fucking with him. And, and, and I, I'm putting all these conversations together. Al mm-hmm. is not fucking with him. They said, no. Nah. Al was not fucking with him. Al was not, I mean, and Foy's not fucking him. And and, he, and I said, why don't Al give him a fight? He says, if I give him a fight, I got, I'm going to blow this 300 million I'm going to get with Floyd. So I can't make this guy fight. So can you help me? Can you, can you call Anthony Lieber? That that was his name, Anthony Lieber, the guy in charge of. Uh, the zone. Well, he's a, he's a PR. I don't have Eddie Hearn's number. But right. I have Anthony Lieber's number. I think is that his name, Lieber? What's his name? Uh, it might be. Yeah, no, I, whatever his last name is. So I called him, and uh, the fight didn't end up happening. But I, but I did the connection for them. But, but that's the whole point of this, from my perspective, is that at some point, uh, somebody got to interject, right? Because, because these are really people's lives. Like it's really like, like you. Have, I mean. I mean, God rest her soul. Your mom passed, and 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 I know just me being a son, you want to do great things for your mom because you know the sacrifices that they made. I grew up in an impoverished neighborhood, and you said you grew up on the east side somewhere yeah, in cool. Cleveland, right? So pretty similar, but different cities, right? And and you're really destroying these guys' lives, and and I think that uh, the fans and the fighters say, "Oh, it's just one fighter." But he helped <laughs> another fight. He's like, that's a whole life right there. What are you talking? That's like boxing murder. What are you talking about? Clear before you know all the stands. Mm-hmm. I did some good stuff for my mother. She, I got her house out the hood. But my thing is this: my parents, old school. When they seen me not fighting, they wouldn't even accept nothing from me. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that was the hardest point in my life when I knew they needed help. And they like, man, we don't want to take nothing from you because we don't, you don't know when the last time you're going to fight. Next time you're going to fight, mm-hmm. we don't want to be no burden on you. And, you know, that that's that was the worst part of the whole situation is that, you know, it was plenty of things that I would try to offer and they wouldn't even take it because they were more worried about me. Like, man, is everything good? Like, is my mental state good? It's just a good thing. You know, I am a strong person, but yeah. that's the type of shit that wanted, made me want to go crazy and just hurt people, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Now you made it out. You made it out, man. You did a help, man. Man, it, 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 it's amazing you didn't break. And I wouldn't be in this position if it was up to some people. That's the bad part. Oh man, they don't. Oh, that gym don't want you to win at all. Oh yeah. man, that gym don't want you to win at all, man. They they not rooting for you at all. And um, you know. one point after Floyd, I was the blueprint. Just but it was. I wasn't saying nothing like that. It was a lot of stuff I was doing on my own at the point where me and my manager had it on the outs. Like, yeah, you might see me pull up in the Bentley or be having this or that. That's for me. Mm -hmm. Like, but it looked like the manager doing this. So all the other kids wanted to sign, you know, they signed with them for free. It's like, no, yeah, I got hand in the cookie jar for real. Like, I'm just, I'm just got, I smartened up. Like, okay, damn, I got to smarten up like a, a, a regular person on the street once they get, this payday, you know, I can't be a, a dumb boxer like how most people think they're going to get a payday and just blow it. Like, you know, I had to smarten up because I did, you know, um, I, I had to smarten up financially and know that Bill got some of the richest people. They didn't start off with millions of dollars. Mm. So when I did start getting lump sums, I had to do what I had to do. But, um, you know, um, I just think I learned it for a reason, and I'm glad to be working with Devin now and helping fighters. And, you know, if I ever get a chance to really be in the business, I'm going to have the same approach. Yeah, your story is definitely going to inspire help, a lot of, help a lot of fighters. Yeah, help people. Like, you know, it's, it's too much money. You know, like somebody told me, y'all been coming up with all the cold quotes, but 
I, I can't see, say who quoted this, but you know how people say, somebody told me that uh -huh. a while ago that even 10% even, even of something beat 100% of nothing. 10% of something beats 100% of nothing, yeah. I always thought of it like that. I had to brainwash myself in the bad situations. I'm like, damn, how the hell I'm only getting this? All right, if I was still living in the streets, I wouldn't get this. Right. So I had to kind of like, even though I knew like I'm getting low ball bad, like, but I'm like, damn, you can't get this nowhere else, like, in one night. But I know that I'm supposed to be getting five, six times more, like I was mm -hmm. told. Do you That's think Steven Espinosa knew? No. You don't think he knew? Nah, because he, you know, they dished the money out, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, and one lump sum. Here, Floyd, take this, or Al. Al did Al go. Yeah, they do. See, it'd be the middle, man. Yeah. Nine percent of the time, think about it. Bob Barron, Filthy Rich, Eddie Hearn, Al. Even Floyd, do you think they care about taking? Don was the only one that was just on so much street shit that yeah, five grand is just like I got an itch to do what I used to do in the streets. Yeah, even though he made plenty of millionaires, right. but um, you know, to me, the best promoter ever as far as like actually promoting events is Don King. Like as far as having like the best events, but mm. um, why would Floyd want to take? I'm like, he not going. He give me this type of shit. Like did he not finna. You know, this ain't no big deal to him. Like, five million not even a big deal to him. Like, he had bet that. Like, I mean, I just seen Floyd bet two, three, five, ten million. So, yeah. that's something that he, you know, but, like I say, to another person, them extra hundreds of thousands here and there add up to millions. Mm -hmm. Right. So, in the cookie jar. But it's just like, damn, I had to just, at the time, just look at what I was. But, yeah, man, it, it's just. You know, I just hope this game. It, I don't think it's gonna really ever change. But it need to be, it need to be better middlemen in the game. Like the promoters are good to me. Like you know, and some of them do got good staff. But I think mm -hmm. I get what it, you're saying. It need to be different, a diversity, because you might work for Eddie Hearn. You might get along with these ten fighters and relate to them, and the other guy might relate to these ten. It should be a team thing, like how you got different ages and all of that in the NBA. It ain't just these three that get everybody. To me, that's the problem because they only gonna pay attention to the two that's hot at the time. Mm. Getting that these fighters still good enough to still make it and fight good. You gotta have them fill in fights, like um yep. that's what I said. So the yesterday, you can't so boxing can't survive without them. It no. can't without them. It's, it's only but. 20 30 real good fighters, they need a home, but on any day they can be beat as long as they game. And you would say, Man, I got him, he got a big payday, he motivated now. A Cinderella, yeah. like, like dudes like Gabe Rosado, he got how many losses? He's still getting man, that dude's still getting it. Like, you know, it's dudes that are still coming there and beat you, like, you know. But to me, the more people that make it in boxing, the better. Like, you know, Jake Paul just made this girl rich, she had to go to a dude. That wasn't even in boxing, even though it's a girl. I know a lot of promoters don't pay much attention, but just the example, like you say, dude went over there and fought with him. Badu went to this company. You know, they had to do what's best for them, but let a dude do what they want to do. Don't try to hold them. You know, I got held down. That's what I ain't like out of everything. They could have, I don't even care about the shortcomings, but when I wanted to leave and do this, I ain't like how it was handled as far as me not doing what I wanted to do behind the scenes. It was too many shackles on me, you know. I ain't that's the part that I wasn't feeling. Yeah, because like, they already fucked you once, and then you're gonna fuck me some more. You know what I mean? Or, or take a cut. Like I say, all right, if you feel like damn, go ahead and say, all right, we want 10, 20 percent of your fight. Go ahead. I was cool, I would have been cool with that. Mm. But nah, like fuck that. We can't, you know, it's like you said, we let this. I mean, this dude like him, that dude like him, this dude like him. I got opportunities to be. A commentator on on this channel, that channel, it. Right. But when, when when you get on that, when you get blacklisted, it's weird because the people want to help and they know that you a solid dude. But it's like shit, you know. I I wouldn't even put people in uncomfortable situations to make them choose, like you said, three, four hundred million or me. Like right. it's shit, I gotta understand that. And what happened in a top ranked gym when Jay Prince showed up? Honestly, people running their mouth too much. It ain't like it was something that that Jay, if he like I say, he if he give you shot after shot, and you keep on talking shit over the phone, and you keep saying this and that, then what choice do you make 
from from it have to be handled like that. And then the dudes on the phone, you the one that's gonna get touched. So yeah, you trying to show off in front of for him, but you forgetting that when these cats see you, you telling them you hanging up, talking shit to them. They gonna see you now. When you got my, you he had a chance to touch a check, which got done. But dudes being mouthy, they forgetting they not Floyd. Like that's the problem with a lot of cats. Yeah. They think they him. You not him. Like I was, I'm there to sign with him. Like I'm, I'm people signing that company because of Floyd. Like ain't nobody right. people. People get turned into a, a couple of people turned into divas just from fucking with Floyd. Like. Even even like fighters, they've changed. Like I've seen people look with their nose in the air just because they walking with Floyd. You know, like I'm like, man, y'all dudes got this TMT suit on, but you ain't fought in two, three years. Mm. Like you, but you just happy you can get a couple girls because you say you a TMT or you know you got people that might work with them. Y'all know y'all ain't really happy, but you not Floyd. Like mm. fall back. Like you you got people with their nose in the air right. toward media towards fans like they Mayweather. that that was one thing that bothered me too like just seeing it like i say i be peeping stuff and i'm like damn this nigga feeling this stuff like he floored right. floyd ain't gonna say what you just said to this person like you but most people think that everybody living this high life right because floyd make everything look good like yeah he look out for a lot of people but a lot of people is be you know they they uh fucking need to humble themselves because they not him like you know you not Floyd. Did 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 Jay Prince make Floyd watch? Oh, he's yeah, he's seen it. He's seen it all. <laughs> hey, <laughs> these bitches do it do what they was doing. Like, you know, we got respect for you. You know, just make shit right. Like they ain't have to do what they was doing. Like it, what other way was it to handle? Hey, 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 I'm, can, sorry. Can, I'm sorry. Can, can, can you confirm or deny? That Codwell was there and got pieced up. That's all I want to know. Man, listen, he he definitely caught. He definitely was on the short end of the stick for sure. (laughs) 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 Like you forgetting that that telephone, it ain't nothing but a flight away. Like you and and that's why I never really wanted stuff to get personal because, you know, I wasn't gonna do no talking. If it get personal, yes, yes, war, yes, yes, take this shit to the graveyard. Right. I'd rather be I'd rather be peaceful and, and handle it that way because I'm not finna do no it ain't no respect when it comes to war, it's all fair whether you die yeah. or I right. So how long did that ass whooping last? You gotta let us know. Well, see, I wasn't there when it took place, but I was with him in town with him. Uh and my brother was with Floyd now. So uh, that the whole weird situation is you know, I was down there with Jay and we flew out to Vegas. And then my brother was already member living with Floyd out. So he called me. I mean, what's going on? Like these, you know, all these niggas that was talking scared, standing by the door now, looking peeping out the door every day now. <laughs> yeah. No. Roger. Hey, hey, hey. You know, now, you know, oh dude, when they hear a door creak, you know, but just dudes just thinking shit a game, like, you know, um, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. That's the bad part. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I read off your can I, can I read uh can I read off your layoffs as it pertains to uh when you was uh fighting? Oh yeah, man. Listen, uh, now listen uh, and uh, look at let's look at this bullshit that we got to. Uh, wait, wait, wait before you go. Wait before you start. Yeah. I wanna. Hey, you got to hear Roger Mayweather tell this story. Roger Mayweather tells this story the best ever. In the, rest his soul. God bless his soul, man. Roger Mayweather tells this story the best. Roger Mayweather said. Roger Mayweather said. He was on the ring apron. I don't know if you know this side of the story. He was on the, he was on the ring apron. He was like, oh, time to go. <laughs> You know, next thing you know, what it that will be is butt ass naked. But <laughs> Roger ain't tell no lies. I'm gonna say <laughs> he gonna slap some damn body, Fred. Oh you butt God. naked on the damn floor. Someone's gonna his, slap some goddamn God body. Rest his soul, man. God rest his soul. One man. Take a shit out of Roger or Big Floyd is a lie. Yeah, like yeah. them don't got no filter, like especially Roger. Like, yeah, know, Roger told yeah. 
I used to sit next to Roger in the white chairs, man, in the oh, gym. Oh. We used to talk all the time, man, all the time. I just have a YouTube channel, so. He, 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 he need it now to, uh -huh. to, you know, to say who don't know shit and this and that. Mm -hmm. He more need it now than ever, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's why they came out. That's why they coming out and about now, because he ain't here to tell them they, they don't know shit. Oh yeah, man, they need to fall back, man. If Floyd trying to do this, he need to add some pieces and and, and, and clean house. Like that's something I ain't even sugarcoating. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, Kyle, mm -hmm. you want to talk about his? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, let's look at this layoff. He got a he, 2011, uh, he, um, November 19th, right? He don't fight for two fucking years. His next fight is against Robert Rodriguez, and that fight is in 2013, uh, February 2nd. I'm pretty busy that year, I think. Huh? Yeah, no, you can keep going from what I remember. I was pretty busy. So so then he got uh, John Molina, which that was a bad stoppage because he was whooping that boy ass the whole fight. In that round, and that's body all shots that he was hitting that nigga with, he, he had to piss blood for a week. Okay, then we go. So then he fight uh, Carlos, that, that cat. He get, he get a TKO. Then he don't fight for another year. Then he fights uh, Miguel for a belt. Okay, then he don't fight for another year. Then he don't fight for another year. Then he don't fight for two years. Then he don't fight for another year. And then when he comes back, he fights uh, Cambosis. So, and I mean, that's the type of shit that we had to deal with. Now, 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 let me say this. Now, the fight before Cambosis, I don't even count that. I went down to Mexico and fought in a bar with no training. Just to, just to, uh, to be real with you, and it's the first time I'm even saying this, I just wanted to give my parents some hope for them not to worry about me. Mm. I'm, I just want to show I'm. A, a, a fighter still because they like man they couldn't wrap their mind around why i wasn't fighting i fought that was my first fight finally away from mayweather promotions i finally got the contract i'm like man, i'm about to fight I literally didn't spar or do nothing i went down there and fought and that was a 20 second knockout so before that it was three and a half years layoff like mm -hmm. i don't even count that and i ended up sparring i think with chris algeri and, and 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 richard comey and i looked good like better than expected to be out the ring that long and that's how the fight with cambosis came about um you know me being like i say i love them tough ass fights they like man the only dude we can get which we think is dumb um out of new york andre rose here you know from havoc uh they was like man we can you know just the only guy that you know it's a tough ass fight to you know been off that line. i'm like i don't care i'm a fighter I just want to prove that I'm. I got to see for myself whether I can fight at the elite level. I feel like I can, but you know. So that fight before that, the little Mexico joint was a 20 second fight just for me to say I was an actor professional because I was off three and a half years where you pretty much damn near retired at that point. But mind you, in that time frame, it wasn't my doing. I wanted fights. You know, I wanted fights. I just finally got out of the contract. And I said, damn, let me go ahead down here and just fight. So I'm active again. So I say I'm, I'm a pro. And, you know, so it can look up a little bit. Like, you know. And, and let's be clear. The, the only His only loss that wasn't a, a split decision was John Molina. And that was one of my questions I want to ask you. Because um, he, he really only got one lucky punch. Yeah. And um, it wasn't like you was just like out of the fight. No. What, how, how, or if it did, how did that fight change you as a fighter? I knew, normally I know. Um, I was in there with a big puncher like John. We all know he was one of the biggest punchers in pot. He was bigger. Uh, I think I took the fight like I was a replacement pretty much to be the main event. Shit. So I'm like, fuck that. I'll fight anybody. You know, um, it I blame myself for showboating the Floyd. Cause I never that ain't something I normally do. I'm looking over to him saluting. If you remember, that's what happened. But when I looked away, it was a but I like doing I wanted to show the fans that 
yeah, I can box, but I'm a killer too. Like, that's why I went out there and still tried to knock them off. Like Floyd told me, I was like, man, you should have just got on the bike. I'm like, I know. But I'm like, you know, I wanted to fucking go out with a bang. Like, so after that, I just knew, like, like Floyd even told me um, in his fights that helped him with Canelo and all of them. He he said he thought of that wrong. Then that's why he always played it safe at the end. Cause he thought about that. Like, damn, you he was he was watching this dude start fucking around. And I'm fucking around with a big puncher. So I wish the ref wouldn't have stopped it, but I ain't complaining. You know, I know I'm a dog. I, I'm I can I knew I was gonna bounce back off that. I'm like, shit, I was an idiot. Like, you know, I just was having fun though. Like, just you know. Now, when you seen Dev get that same shot against uh Jorge Lenares, what as a trainer, what was going through your mind? Did you revert back? to that particular situation or or what was your mindset okay well well one thing I, I that was around a little after my mother's death so i had to leave camp like the last few weeks or last month you know just to be with family and stuff so i was out one thing that i would have told him is be careful at the end because he i mean he a veteran he gonna land some shit on you anyway lenaris can fight like he Devin is a babe. Who is he, 21? Dude gonna land something on you. Like, you know, he a veteran, but I knew that he would be looking for it late. So, yeah, you went all them rounds, you fall asleep sometime. Mm. So I would have made sure, you know, to keep him, like, uh, alert, alert. Because you sometimes when you so good and you win it so easy, you could have that lapse where you fall asleep. And, um, you know, me working with him, I just try to give him everything that I can, man, to make him succeed at the highest level. It can't be no – and I know he could feel it. If he didn't feel it, he probably wouldn't want me around. Like, most fighters don't want him to – why would they want, you know, him to – I want him to go as far as I know he can go. He could possibly beat that 50 and 0. But we not – we don't care about – if I don't think he can be beat. But if he lose one day, all the greats lost. It ain't like he gonna cry and say, "Oh, I ain't undefeated." He want to fight the best, like you know. It's time he wanted to fight Lumachenko early. When I was like, "Man, hold up, like shit, I think you can beat him." But yes, wait a little bit, man. That dude's so competitive. If here, just two people say that a guy can beat him, we'd meet up that night sometime, and that's what we were trained for. Like it, it'd be a report of Lumachenko beating him, and he'd call me over that night. Like, man, train me to beat Lumachenko. Like, let's work on him. This was early last year, like February. I could show you pictures where I was all back training him to beat uh, Lumachenko. That's just how competitive dude is. Like, he want to fight the best. Do, do you have any – as a trainer, do you have any regrets as far as uh, training a fighter? Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, Devin – and shout out to Bill Haney, too. Cause this wouldn't be possible without him. Um, Bill was a good thinker, a good mastermind. He put it together. Bill was always thinking, um, I got to get him credit. I wouldn't even be training if it wasn't for him. You know, it, it was Devin's decision as well, but Bill was the one that always thinking himself out like, damn, who can we get? We don't got big Floyd no more. He got older. So he called me like, man, you know, can I, can I help train? Devin told me when he was a kid, I was going to be his trainer one day. Mm -hmm. I like off because I never really wanted to train. But he like one day you're gonna train. He's saying this, you know, I knew Devin since he was seven, eight years old. So he would say that when he was younger. I kind of laughed it off, like, you know, but organically, the fact that he was his whole style, like I say, that's why we always gonna admire Floyd, because we fucking got our style and we learned so much shit from that family that it can't be undone. Like, you know, but um I can't train a lot of fighters. I'll say that. Like, Devin kind of spoiled me to where my expectations are so high that he kind of – he made me not want to waste my time. Like, man, dude, so serious and so good and want to learn. He's a student. He still want to get better every day. He spoiled me. Like, you know, to where I got – I came in with a great fighter like that, and I and, and he do everything that, that I ask him, and he can do it. You know, he listened to his dad. He respectful. Killer in the gym, but the, a kid, a great kid outside the ring. You know, he disciplined, he focused. But my thing is I just know I can't be one of them kind of trainers just training anybody. Like, I'm not 
you know, I don't, I don't be wanting to, I, I love helping people, but I would rather do it on the business side than actually train a lot of fighters because that, it take up a lot of time. I sacrifice my body and everything. That's why I say I got a couple more fights in me, but, you know, it ain't easy keeping up with Devin and I'm, my body ain't the same. <laughs> <laughs> hands or none of that but it's worth the sacrifice to help him reach the pinnacle that i know and that his dad know that he can reach i'm i'm all for it and amari you know i just got him and amari right now mm. that all motherfucker right. that that motherfucker man listen no problem that body shot that body shot he hit that dude with fred the whole the, it, as loud as that place was you can hear that body shot. You probably can hear it outside in the parking lot. Dude, he hit that motherfucker hard as hell. Cuz went straight down, like a, like a stack of bricks, boy. Straight down. And he fought a tough fight. I know you know him, Fred, uh, Tim Lee. Mm -hmm. That was a hard fight for a 19-year-old in his fifth oh, fight. Sure, sure. I ain't even going to lie. I'm, just more, I'm like, man, I'm like, we got to get this shit out the way because I got Devin fighting later. But I'm more like studying his fight and i'm worried about him I'm not worried but i'm saying dev man our dev is dead like omari young i know what he can do he a killer and he's so good of a listener whatever you know i mean this dude is catching on like a sponge like for him to be 19 i started working with him probably about a year and a half ago and this kid just whatever i tell him man this dude just do it i don't care who he's far i gotta almost save him from himself and make him wow. 19. Cause he like, oh, I want to get in there with this dude. I, man, he get in there with fucking uh, Canelo tomorrow if you let him. Mm. To where I'm like, hold on, we'll need that. We'll need that. <laughs> like, as Canelo mutually agree, like, all right, I ain't gonna try to kill him. But mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I, Amari can handle himself with anybody though. I even threw him in there. I even throw him in there with Devin sometime. Mm. Yeah, wow. and uh, cause it's crazy because you know I was in because I was in the locker room with y'all. And I, you know, what I'm saying, so I, I heard everything that was that was that was going on, and then to see it translate in the ring was fucking amazing. And, and uh, because you told him to do a certain thing, you kept y'all kept working on it, working. On it. I got I got it on uh, on wax on my phone. Y'all kept working on the same punch, same punch, same punch. And when the fight happened, that punch landed. And and that's my thing, and that's my niche. Like I say, I got that from the Mayweathers. Mm. We don't train just to look pretty. It's a it's a method behind it, but you got to get it straight from them. You can't watch YouTube and just say, "All right, I'm gonna hit the Miss Fancy." No, it's a method too. It's a correct way and a specific way to do it. Like, and once you could perfect it, it's gonna be it's hard to beat you. You are gonna have to knock the person off. Like, by me being up under them, I can see why Floyd haven't lost yet. The Floyd Sears, you know, they never got their credit. I don't even think neither one of them got trainer of the year. No, he's he always complained about that. Crazy, like man, them dudes is wizard. Them the smartest people I ever seen, and I've been around everybody. But by me being young and having that old wise mind, I just don't boast and brag a lot about being a trainer because I I pay my respects to the OGs, and I don't even call myself a trainer yet. Mm. But I know for a fact I know more than ninety nine percent of them mm. from who I've been around. I soaked it up. I've been around the Manuel Stewart. I've been around the Mayweather's food. 20 plus years of all of them and, and, the, and the Bill Millers and the Tommy Rollins and these guys all train 80% of the best fighters ever. That's up under Joe Lewis, Sugar Ray Robinson, James Tony, Tommy Hearns, many more greats, Floyd Mayweather. I soaked it in. So dudes that look like, oh, this cat young, but I'm just humble about it. I don't say like, oh, I, I can go out and brag and try to cheat, but I keep it exclusive for my fighters, like, you know, the guys I work with. But at the end of the day, I see a lot of holes and a lot of what's going on with a lot of fighters. I think most of them don't even know what trainer to – uh I'll be wanting to give people advice, but I don't want to get – like, I, I damn near think about making the league a trainer just to make boxing better because people don't even know who to train with, mm -hmm. where they can be a better fighter. It's different strokes for different folks, like example. Right. Ricky had, and I would have never told him to train with Big Floyd. But you know why he trained with him? Because when he fought Floyd Jr., Floyd was so much harder than he looked. He wanted to learn the same shit because he knew. All right, think about Canelo. Why is Canelo so good? Who do we mimic? Kim and his trainer. Mm. Well, I remember. Right. 
now so so Ricky hadn't I would have knew off top like nah this ain't for you you ain't gonna be able to catch on all this stuff like this ain't for you this ain't your style like now nah, when Chad Dawson Joanne Guzman me Devin our it's different styles you know we getting into some whole other stuff on the training but that's a big problem in boxing too is that a lot of fighters don't even know they self or what situation they should be in right even on the training side boxing can be better if they knew who was who and not just look at the hype because it'd be dudes that not that don't got no hype that's the best trainers right right some dudes that have trash they be just all motivational speakers but they can't really teach uh-huh Get the Eric Thomas on, man. We'll, we'll, have, we'll, we'll do this last. You got one more question for him, Kyle? Let me go do this. Yeah, yeah I had a, uh, yeah, I had right here. One second. Mr. Mello says the barbershop is on fire. Great interview. Can we get Mickey to talk to speak on the Chicago 80-year-old OG that bring they bring into camp and a team of coaches he has? Oh, that's my guy. You talking about Kirk? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's my guy, man. We we just like his energy, you know. Um oh. So. One thing I like with Devin is it's just certain people that you just want around. Like, I mean, one of y'all might be a positive force to the camp. Any positive force that I can have that's rooting for Devin or that his dad see really want Devin to win, it can't do nothing but help him. Like, you know, you got all that good energy in the room and that, that you know, he's not even a trainer or nothing. The guy that you talk about, he's just an old man that we all love that's mm. – around watching Joe Lewis and them fighting Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, I think that he just enjoyed being in the gym. You know, he's 81 years old. He just turned – well, he'd be 81 in February, but the old school, like, um, good dude. We just like having him in the gym. I just like having good people around, and, and so do they. Like, Devin know who want him to win. You know, that's why we stay in our lane. Like, we won't be at other gyms no more because I don't want nobody around them faking like they want him to do this I, and, and – not that it's, it ain't gonna get past Bill anyway, mm -hmm. but my intent is for him is like he my son, right? Bill not around. I don't want nobody around him. My intent is for him is to do what he is expected to do and what he can do. Mm -hmm. Like you know, because it was like that before I came in. I've been seeing him since he was a kid, so uh, I know a lot of people say they want him to make it and act like they want to help him. That ain't the case. Dudes fear him for real because he. He got that same Mayweather type that Jordan. He got that in him. Hmm. The, the good know. thing is, it don't look like it spills out into the uh, into his personal life, though. You know, what I'm saying he's real grounded in that in that in that manner. Dev, I got to pull Dev off the PlayStation. <laughs> he do what kids do. I mean, he just turned twenty three. Like he, yeah. I remember when the pandemic first started, man. I come over. He's so competitive. He would want to beat the board before. I'm like, go ahead, Dad. Like, go. Sometimes it might take an hour and a half or two, but I understand. Like, I want him to still have his 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 childhood a little bit. You know, like you know, that's what he enjoyed doing. But he's so competitive that he won't even want to pause until he beat it, till he beat the board. But I like that in him, so I'm like, Dad, let me let him keep playing because I don't want him to change that. Really, mm. he'd be like, man, he'd be playing the game. Like, man, damn, all right, Mick, we we gonna get started in 30, 20 minutes. He ain't beat the board in his 40 minutes. Uh, but that I learned something from seeing that. I'm like, damn, this dude hate losing more than other people like to win. It ain't even about him just winning, man. He don't want you competing with him, whether it's a jog. He not letting you beat him in running, none of that. Like, he really got what it take, uh, you know. And it's going to go up even more. Like, a lot of, you know, as you mm -hmm. see him get more mature, older, go up and wait. A lot of things, he just going to keep progressing. Kyle, go ahead. You got one more question, Kyle? Or was that it? Uh, shit, I had one. I, 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 I done forgot it. Shit. Man, Mick, man. We, two hours, Mr. Bay. Are uh, you a Moore, by the way? I just wanted to know. Um, My dad, he is, but we grew. I grew up free-spirited. Like, uh -huh. That's my question. I wanted to ask him. My own way. Like, he never wanted to force nothing on me and my siblings, so I just naturally learned about it on my own. I know all of the principles, the teachings, and I'm real heavy in the uh, spiritual, spiritual, and um, I'm I'm real into that kind of stuff. Just yeah. as a person, that's what helped me get by, like you know, so, and, yeah. and to make good decisions in life from those principles. And know that it's bigger than this. It's bigger than boxing. It's right. bigger than even hurting this man or 
or or trying to do something that's man's a bigger picture. Mm. So all of them principles helped me in life because other than that, I probably would have been with like that mixed with where I'm from and who I'm around. I would have probably I could have possibly been in prison for a long time, but that stuff grounded me. So, uh, yeah, everybody asked me that, but yeah, I got the name from, you know, passed down, but um, I know the teachings and but my dad never like forced it on me. I just automatically just wanted to learn. Okay. Yeah. I always, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. uh, and that's interesting. No, I, no, we appreciate you coming in here. Kyle, you want to say something? Oh, and yeah. I, I had two questions. Uh, how did you get your nickname? Uh, well, I got, I had a couple different nicknames. Um, you know, people used to call me Sugar because when I first started boxing, I was tripling and, and, and throwing two, three hooks at a time in my first, second fight from watching all the tapes on Ray Robinson. When my granddad died, my grandmother put all the tapes on the lawn because she hated boxing. She called my dad and said, if you don't come get these tapes, the trash man ain't going to have it. So I put in the tape to watch Muhammad Ali. And I seen another guy on there who ended up turning out to be Ray Robinson. So I kept watching him. So, you know, but uh, spirit, just from having a strong spirit, everybody say, damn, like, man, like, how the hell, like, you get through this or get through that, like, you know, and, and I, I credit that to being overall why I'm where I am and why I can sit in the room with people and and and, and people feel the gen genuine presence, like you said, like, that means more to me than boxing and being rich, because it's all temporary, you know, Martin Luther King, to all, uh, JFK, all them people got murdered by people probably nobody's or people won't know. So I always been humble when I seen I, I, I study them kind of stories and I see if you go about life a certain way, at least you could be in a better position just by being a solid individual. Like, you know, um, it did hurt me a lot as well, but um that's that's how I got the name. You're talking about spirit, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and Final question for me is, would you ever let your son become a boxer? Nope. Nope, because of the business. Even though he probably wouldn't have to go through that. But my son is smart. I'd rather have him, you know, doing something else. It's too wicked. But I don't even think he had a hunger because he growing up, you know, with a silver spoon in his mouth. Um, and that's why I credit Bill, too, because Devin grew up good. Yeah, he did. But he not, he not like his dad. His brother and his dad grew up in the streets. Devin won't fake to you one time and say I'm a street this or that. He I love that about Devin. I actually love that about Devin. He always said, I ain't trying to be, but I beat your ass, though. I he, love that about Devin. That he's just himself. Yeah, he's he, yeah. that. Like, you know, um, but no, my son, I want him, I wouldn't, I'm gonna teach him just for self-defense, but I would have him an uh, engineer or a, a business owner, um, or even playing golf or something. I don't want him in, in boxing. I might relapse and Somebody cheat him is going to be different than me. Mm. Right. Man, we appreciate you coming in here, man. This was oh, the fastest two hours oh, of my week, man. Man, listen, anytime, man. Please we, come back with Amari, man, when he has a fight, man. And let's talk some boxing, man. And, oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he'll come on anytime. Yeah, him, Dad. You be having Bill on, right? Yeah, Bill pops in anytime he want, man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah Whenever Amari. Bill want to argue with me, he'll pop in. You never feel like cussing me out. He'll just pop. Yeah, Bill, Bill, a good business man. Like he, <laughs> yeah. he don't talk to he don't who he don't like. So yeah, man. I like up, up, but Bill, you know, is a uh, he did a hell of a job. Um, me seeing what he did for them behind the scenes is incredible. Like everybody thought they was dumb for not signing with Mayweather promotion, but look at him now. I'm so glad he didn't sign with him. Man, they hindsight 2020. I didn't know him then, but I I was I'm I'm glad he didn't sign with him. I'm. I, I, I can't wait for Tank to get away. You know, like it's tank, tank just Tank biting his lips, his tongue, his biting all his nails. Man, Tank is playing a great <laughs> role right now. I just say that. See, see, these people don't know the stuff that I know, so I just whatever. But Tank gonna talk one day. Oh yeah, and, and that's the. <laughs> I'm just glad he, you know he got a great manager behind him. Yeah, know? he do, he do, and 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 that's good because it's. So that, that's the silver lining in it, you know. Yeah, shout out to Adrian Broderick for getting him with Al and not just Floyd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. shit would have been different. Yeah, what exactly. well, man? I, I damn it, I know I said with the final question, but damn it. Uh, do we have any uh, what's any, got any updates on Cambosis' uh, ass whooping? Yeah, I think it's gonna happen, you know. Um, 
Uh, he seemed like it'd be a man. Of, he seemed to be a man of his word. I mean, honestly, I give him credit because he was saying this shit before the fight even happened. He said, oh, I'm going to beat you, Timo. He like, I give you my word. I'm going to fight you since these other cats just talking. I remember he telling that. me, like, man, every week, dude coming out saying that he going to win. Like, so and shit, he did it. So um, I think, you know, I think it's real close. It could possibly be 80, 90 percent. You know, Devin is all for it. You know, if we got to go over there. I'm sure Eddie gonna have a business, right? Um, I love for it to be here in America. Dude used to fighting over here anyway, but we don't care as long as it's a boxing ring. Devin gonna handle his business, mm -hmm. and then I fought him last, so I know how to fight him. Mm -hmm. But I ain't gonna scare him because I'm gonna get off of that. Cause dude, no, that what I know about him, I've been in there with him, so mm -hmm. that was my last fight. But you know, um, it's a great fight. I get dude his props because man, dude looked him in his eyes and said, "We gonna fight." Good, man. That's it. I ain't going to ask you no more questions, man. I know you got to go. Oh, no. It's all good. Thank so. you, dog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, sure, uh, man. uh when are you going to announce the fight? Do you know? Your with Cam Bozo? No, with, Ten with Tevin. Oh, I ain't sure. It'll probably, I got to see what's on Jeff Devin's uh, schedule. I still <laughs> put it first. Like, you know, that's the understanding that we got. I just want to get a couple more fights just to throw some teasers out there. Like, God damn. Imagine if what he doing now. Imagine what he would have done at the right time you know i just want to get the fans to show them i could still win these big fights like i almost beat cambosis mm. you know so i, I got to see what devin doing first because that's priority number one like mm. you know that's the agreement we got so it'll have to be before or after right right man thank you for coming in here man man, man and, and i know that this interview along with your ones with trill and uh blue Blue Bud is going to definitely wake a whole lot of people up as it pertains to the business of boxing and and not just signing with somebody because they're a great fighter, but they got to have another. They got to have business acumen. You understand? Right. And uh, to get to get them and their team to the next level. A thousand. Percent. Yeah. Thank you, dog. You want me to beam you? I appreciate you, man. This was a hell of an interview. Oh, oh for sure. And and when you. How far have you and CC started the book yet? That'll be dope. That'll be dope. No, nah, I ain't really get started yet, bro. Okay, man. okay. Please do, please do, please yeah. do. Don't leave no detail out, man. Yeah. Even, but this beyond this, I want to make this clear. Everybody, <laughs> it's a Mayweather bashing party. Everybody tell me to come out with a book or movie because it's the entire story. I only got the five percent of things. Like, I, man, I want to. I, I want to hear about dying. You got you got two filmmakers on 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 on, on post right now. <laughs> yeah, so not well. My main thing is, you know, making sure to be. I learned from not having, you know, making sure the business is right mm -hmm. and just lining it up, doing it in the right way. But I, I don't got a choice but to the stories that I had and who the detect the, the the deaths, the, the people I just sat with, and the stories that I, mm -hmm. that happened. You know, I, I got to, I got to come out. Right. With. I mean, it's rare to have from a small city, just from my neighborhood. You got Don, then Al, then me. So that, that, that that's insane that don it's king 300,000 people it's the, like the 55th biggest city in america small city pretty much wow. so what's the odds of that that we are from the same that's why when i think spiritually on stuff it's meant to be you could try to it ain't no it ain't like we from la new york where it's big boom, and it's, boom. me being from the same literally the same block as both of them and affiliations and how i even met floyd and manuel j mm. that just showed me that the creator got is you know it ain't gonna never get so bad as long as is i stay who i am uh, what was the roadblock in don king and al Heyman's relationship you talking about with them two yeah to, oh you talking about them two with each other yeah just working together and and just being on rival but al did help him out a lot like in his later years mm -hmm. he throw him a bone here and there but Al, it, I mean, to a dude like Don, it's only one. He got that mentality, like, it's only me, and that's it. You know, he older than, than uh, Al, so he been around longer. But Al came through, through the, you know, the music and all of that stuff and, and did, you know, the biggest stuff in that to cross over. And then I'm coming for your throne. I think it was just a competitive thing, kind of. Mm. Like, Dan, this is other dude, you know. I don't know if they maybe they might have had a chance to work together before or something. It probably was a little, I think it was a hometown rivalry. Okay. But then, you know, he kind of threw out, I mean, down a bone or two. 
uh, as as Don got it. Yeah, right. we just gave me another question, Fred. We're trying to get this man out of here, man. You can oh, get no. this question. Right, my bad, my bad, my what, bad. What, what? This is the last one, man. Okay, I promise. Last, last, last one. I promise. Last, 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 last one. What about Al Heyman and Jay Prince? Why couldn't they coexist together as a unit? I asked Jay Prince that question. Oh yeah, what did he say? Uh, he he gave me well, uh, you know. <laughs> We were walking in the MGM together, and I had my arm around him, and I was just talking and walking with him. And uh, I love Jay Prince, dog, because yeah. you know, because I'm a Malcolm X guy. So yeah. I love when these guys yeah. p- people say I'm hard on them because I have cousins that I be talking to, and I know they're watching the show, so I'm always hard hard on them. But I uh, I love those redemption stories, man. And uh, he's a uh, and he just flipped it, man. He just flipped it. And now he's a mogul. He's a he's a mogul. Yeah. Mogul mode with all caps, but but go ahead. You want the cow answer that question? Oh no, you um, I think you're right. It's one of them drag out. Oh damn, can competition <laughs> two yeah. cats on one ship? I don't think it'll work. Mm-hmm. As great as dudes that both of them are, they probably put fights together with each other. That, but as far as them having the same roster, that won't. They too, they both too big. Right. I think they can work together. Like, all right, my fighter fights your fighter. You know. Mm-hmm. If any of their fighters want something to happen, they're going to let them do it. Mm. A lot of times, fighters blame the promoters, but they be hiding behind them. Because if you tell the promoter you really want this fight, like when Lumachenko fought Gary Russell, didn't he fight him on PBC? Not HBO, I think. Yeah, no. HBO. Yeah, that was PBC then. Yeah, that was PBC. Yeah. He wanted it. Yeah. He wanted that. So it happened. Top Rank knew he really wanted it. They was like, damn, you want to be one. You. That was a risky fight to go in one and one and fight a good fighter like Russell. Mm-hmm. But look what happened when he really showed he wanted. So a lot of fighters be lying, like acting like it's the promoter. Man, if y'all really go to y'all promoter and say, I really want to fight this dude, they're going to put it together. They, even if you say, I cross the street and, mm-hmm. and go over there and fight on their company, as long as the money, right? Unless it's Lerner LB and DeWan got something to do with it. That's it. That's the only time. They taking money off the yeah. top. Because, I mean, they don't even have to say so. Like, you know, it looked good, but. If Floyd wanted to happen, it'll happen. Like whatever he wanted to happen, if right. it's in this uh if it's even in this foresight, he like, you know, but other than that, he in Dubai, he in this country, that country, right. he buying this car, that car. Yeah. He can't look at all them things at once. Like, you know, that's why I was saying them staffs be important, like them pieces. The Infrastructure. Mid- right. How about Al and Jay Z? Why that didn't work out? I think Jay was another one, even in his music business. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to work with Dane when they first started. Yeah. They sent me clothes, uh, Jay and Dane, uh, Pro Kez and all of that way back in the day. Rock of, uh, so I want to thank them if they uh listening. Um, they sent me used to send me boxes of clothes, mm-hmm. rock wear, all of that stuff. Um, this is way back when they were still hot. But uh, Jay, I think, is like a Floyd. He's so great. It ain't a passion of his. He can't overlook too many other people's careers. Like, you know, even in music, when when Dame left, it kind of crumbled a little bit. Right. I don't think his intentions was bad, but he concentrating on being great. And he on this plane, that plane. So I think he, he kind of similar to Floyd and Jay was going to do business at one point. I remember mm. not to put Floyd business out, but I remember Floyd showed me a lot of stuff with him and, him and Jay-Z's interaction. This was probably 14, 15 years ago when he was showing me him and Jay-Z, you know, they was interacting. They was thinking about doing some stuff like way back. Yeah. Yeah. Look at All right. That's, that's Look it. who's that's this that's guy. It. Damn. It. Hey, he got, hey, you got to come back tomorrow, man. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Go live tomorrow, friend. Fuck it. Fred got my number. Uh, oh, man. It's love, man. We appreciate you coming in here. Mr. Bay and uh Damn man, I got so many more to go, man. Shit. Thank you. He'll be back. He'll be back. Him and Amari. Please come back with Amari. I think Amari oh, next. Definitely. Amari got next. I think oh, Amari sure. gonna be a world champion for yeah. sure. Focus. Yeah, stay focused. You know what I'm saying? Listen, yeah. Fred, he from he from the town, man. You know, you know, when niggas from the town, you know, say we got some of the best fighters to ever touch the planet. Yeah. You know, we got Dev, Amari, you know what I'm saying, Andre Ward. You know what I mean? We got the town got some niggas, man. Right. Definitely, you know. Definitely. 
Appreciate you. And, and your Instagram is Mickey Bay e- Eternal, right? Yeah, yup. Yep. Mickey Bay Eternal, man. Please go follow him, man. Yeah. Go follow him and tell him thank you for the interview. Question is, was definitely... when one door shut, another one open. Yeah, no, for sure. No, for sure. You got a whole community dealing yeah. with you now, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm just so, doing doing what I say I'm going to do. Sometimes it's simple. Nobody can be but when you go out your way to fuck people, it's, you know, eventually it's going to come back. Right. Right. You're right. Cause Leonard that would be name is Mud now. He he I just got a DM. He challenging fans to the gym. Hey, you need to show up at the gym. Man, he should already know better from the top hey. rank. <laughs> hey Floyd. Hey, hey, uh, hey friend. Show yeah. him the video, man, so he can get a laugh before he get up out of here. Cause uh, it's on my page. He saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you challenge Eddie Hearn or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. About uh, Caldwell, Caldwell, uh, you know, I'm, I'm free. I like women. What he say? I don't like men. What he say? He said, I don't like men no more. I oh, like oh, women. That's what y'all talking about. Oh, okay. yeah. We, he sound because he sound just like him. Oh my bad. I thought that y'all. I'm like, huh? I'm I'm like, damn. They must. Oh, okay. I uh, yeah, get. yeah. They don't sound like him, but Wait. yeah, man. man. He sound just like that nigga, dog. <laughs> he does. He do. He do. Listen, you you know it's, it's so much real the shit that we you know if the cameras weren't on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. But y'all definitely you know y'all own to something for sure. Yeah, they nah, I, I I I know more than I gave up tonight. But yeah, yeah it'll, it'll come. I can't wait to read the book. I can't what? wait to read the book. Tell Leonard LV stop getting them cars repo. That's what he need to start doing. Man, listen. <laughs> you know it, it look it look good. So, yeah, it look good. It look good. It look, it look, that's it look, kid. Yeah. Look, sounded good. Right. The worst goatee in the game. <laughs> Listen, he he, the, he he challenged he challenged Daddy. He better chill. Yeah, he better chill. Better chill, man. You he, he, he ain't trying to see. He he don't want to see Bill about nothing. No, nah, he was quiet. already knocked out Jeff. I mean, oh, I should even said, man, come on. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking too much, man. I'm getting oh. loose with the list, man. You better go, man. Before I start. <laughs> No. Oh man, come on! If you don't like the truth, yeah, fact. I mean, that's like somebody saying they go out at one o'clock and they say, "Damn, there go the sun." Mm-hmm. But you want it to be the moon. You, we know it's the sun, mm-hmm. but just because they they uh like you tell them if you, the truth is the truth, right? One the fact is a fact. It ain't, ain't nobody making up nothing. Mm-hmm. One plus one equal two. Like right. point blank. Right. Right. Right, right. Thank you, dog. Thank you, thank you. I'm not yeah, appreciate you, man. Bro. You get me in trouble. Bro, yeah, I talk to y'all soon, and I get with uh Amari too. Yeah, please. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun show for sure, for sure. Yeah, I had him. Uh, I had I had a Mario uh, on on the late show for hella long. We had to we had to <laughs> we had to push him out. Oh yeah, oh that's good, man. Yeah, y'all getting him early because yeah. you know he's gonna be a star. Oh, he's uh, gonna be a star. He's gonna be a star. Impressive. You see, you see how I'm coming, man. You know what I mean. I'm always repping my niggas. If you support them, you support me. You know, so I'm glad. Hey, hey. yeah, fact. you know, I, I got that. I got, I got that. Uh, I got. We got. We got to uh, redo our picture. I, mean, I had a mask on in the damn picture. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> they just to check the training sessions out too. Mm. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm coming to Vegas, man. You know what I'm saying. I'm out here making films now. So were you shit. in the bank? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm mean, out. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a lot of family there and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I got your number. Shit, we'll we, we'll get together. Yeah, yeah. Y'all hit me up anytime. I'm just shaking this fucking uh jet lag off. Thank, Thank you. Man. Oh, you was damn. Yeah, he was Fred, we gotta get him out of here because I'm I'm gonna talk to nigga for another ten minutes. He's my boy Rail. He was with my dog Rail. Uh, uh, yeah. All my people out there, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my guy. Yeah. Facts. Facts, facts, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. You gotta be with my friend. We're gonna be with him all night, dog. Thank you, thank you, Vicky Bay. Appreciate you, man, coming in here, man. You just dropped another you just dropped another classic in the shop, man. Thank For you sure. so much. And send my regards to the Haney's, please. Oh man, most definitely. Yup. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get Omar Omari on. Please, 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 please do that. Thanks. All right, y'all take it easy. Thank you, man. Thank all you. All right. Thanks. God. Humble guy, Kyle. Humble man, we, guy. Hey, hey, listen, we damn near could have came for another hour, boy, because the shit started coming. 
Cause you know, you know, Fred, you know, y'all, y'all know Fred DM me the other day, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to be more intellectual today. So I had to, you know, I, I, hey, I, I had didn't to say that. <laughs> that. I, did I did not say that, nigga. I did not say that. <laughs> I had to dial back my jokes today, goddamn. No, I didn't say don't tell no jokes. What do you? No, talking? I ain't, no, 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 no. I'm just talking shit. Oh, okay. I was about to say <laughs> <laughs> these people go believe that shit. Hey, no, but uh, uh, yeah, this this was a fun interview. Hey, hey you know, Leonard Ellaby was watching. Oh man, that motherfucker. Fuck him. Yeah, man. I'm telling y'all, man, man, man. Hey, you gotta. Hey, 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 Chris, I ain't gonna tell. I ain't gonna tell a soul. But you got to DM me, or I'm gonna call you. Whichever one works. Uh -huh. But you got to tell with that story you just said. You you said a little bit of it. I got to hear that. About but, who? Man, About who? You just said. Uh, you said somebody got knocked out. Oh well, well, we'll have Bill Haney tell the story. We'll have Bill Haney tell the story. Oh, he got off off that apron. What? <laughs> man, Bill ain't no joke, man. Bill ain't no joke, man. Bill love his son. I'm gonna say that right now. Anything about Devin and obviously about his other kids as well. He ain't playing. I'm just going to say that. He don't play about his kids 0%. Zero. Not not a half a percent, not one-tenth of a percent, not one-hundredth of a percent. I the, the first thing I ever said to Bill, I said, I'm going to need four hands to fight you. That's the first thing I ever said to Bill ever in my life. First thing I ever said. And and we've been cool ever since. Yeah. Hey, that's hey, why, hey, that's hey, why we fight so much. That's why he and I fight so much. But go ahead. And speaking of play, man, mm -hmm. in the words of the great philosopher DB, Fred. What, no, Fred wait, 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 oh. wait. I want to breathe a little bit. Oh, good, good. One bit, one bit, one bit. No, no, we got 10 seconds, man. I just I, I just wanted to say thank y'all for coming in here tonight, man. And uh enjoy your night. Be careful, man. Be careful out there. Don't drink and drive. If you run out of money, call click it a ticket. Click it a fucking ticket, man. Yeah, get a ticket. Sleep in the car. If you need, if you need Uber money, text this number right here. I'll send you twenty dollars to get home. Or I'll send the Uber for you. You know what I mean? But don't drink and drive. Don't do it, man. It's not worth it. It's not worth it, man. Tomorrow is a dangerous night in terms of driving, in terms of alcohol, in terms of partying. And uh don't keep my ass in the house. I'm definitely staying home because I'll be watching football anyway. So I'm definitely staying home. I'd rather go out on go the blue, Fred. Yeah, then go out on the 31st, man. But it's a real dangerous night, and sadly and true, we're gonna wake up on Monday. I mean, not Monday, but on the first, and there's gonna be an accident. There's gonna be so it, it just every year, and I'm not wishing it, but that's just the reality. If you're playing a numbers game with close to 400 people in America, so. Um, you know, so be careful. Please be careful. And uh, if you can spend the night where you're at, spend the night. You know what I mean? So do it do it like that because there's too many people out there tomorrow night so or tonight, midnight. So, but yeah, that's all I want to say, Kyle. But go ahead. Fred, we did it again, God damn it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The the, the tandem. The film making tandem, God damn. Yeah, we gotta get you in a you gotta you gotta get you gotta win a film festival so you can be an award winning film festival. Yeah, well, hey, listen, director. I'm getting this uh, as soon as 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 soon because I it's my fault because I had him uh because I had to add my cousin in there at the beginning of the movie. So I had to you know how like they do the eleven memory of so I had to I had to we added that in the beginning. You know, everything I do, you know what I'm saying, everything that I do, I got to you know, I got to put him. I got to put him in there, cause you know this pod, like the mics and the cameras and all the shit and all the uh, all the extra shit that I got, the soundboard. You know, he did. He he the reason I got all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's my favorite cousin. That's why you see the, the big ass picture back there. You know what I'm saying? That's my dog, man. So every chance I get, I gotta uh, pay homage or quote him. You know, in the words of the great philosopher Lil E, I want y'all to breathe air and live life. You know, just you know, that's 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 the shit, man. But in the words of the great philosopher DB, Fred Rowe, play the song, Fred. Yeah, in 2020, it was 330 million, but that's just documented. MMA, MMA uh, fans, head over to the boxing section. Go ahead, spin my back. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. 
Birdman, Choice, appreciate your Mamba, Brent Jones, Roland, C. Jones, Darren, Box of Sparring, appreciate your Brother Cole, President Y'all Four, man, appreciate you coming back, man. Thank you, Birdman. Thank you, Kyle. Don't forget, Sunday, we coming into the shop. We're going we gonna to buy Kyle's movie. Thank you, the war story, man. We're going to Mr. Robinson, Melanin, Poppin. What's up? I'm going uh, to have Josh come through on Sunday. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, great. That'll be awesome. Anthony. Oh. Yes. Two weeks, Fred. We uh, we 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 set to film another uh, documentary. You gonna start it? Yep, filming another one. <laughs> Mark Troy Wright, Isaac. Club Fifty Seven. That's dope. That'll be good. So you gonna travel? People's Hernandez. Bird man, K. Sims. Kyle in his bag right now. Kyle in his bag right now. That's Dennis Younger. Yeah, that song never gets old, right? Right, Snoop? Hey, Sweet Science Examiner, appreciate you, man. Breathe air, live life. Lil' E, I love that quote. Yeah, this was a hell of a... Man. I'm telling y'all, man. Damn. Butt wow. naked. <laughs> it's sad when you when four black men just turn their back on one black man. You know what I mean? For the sake of money. For the sake, sake of money. money. For the sake of a few dollars, get the hell out of here, man! It's sad, man. Sad. Yeah. They, they, they show sure enough sabotage that man. Oh, they sabotage. That's what he said. It's Jarvis, 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 Jarvis. Yo, 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 yo. It's my personal statement. Run the game like I'm Aces. You turn to be the game. Man, dog, I'll be looking forward to this shit, man. Every damn day. No oh, matter how sleepy a motherfucker be. Thank you. Now that's love. Mm. Life's a play with no rehearsal. Last time, the devil is a lie. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember you first implemented this song, Fred. <laughs> yeah, sweet size. It's beyond sad, man. You got a, a manager who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars turn his back. You got a another fighter who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, close to a billion dollars, and he pretend it's not happening. And Leonard Ellaby is is they dipping their hand in the pot together. This happened to so many fighters, all of them. Not not all of them, but a lot of them. Anyways, man, love y'all, man. All of them, all, all of them, but tank. all of them, all of them. What happened to all of them from Jacksonville, man? You got to come back and holler. Appreciate you, man. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. Wonderful, wonderful. No, no, that's 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 that's, that's, uh, that's what white people uh, uh, lean. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we gone. Love y'all, man. Peace. Peace. All right, big friend, holler, baby. All right, gone.